Are we low level or high level? Are we low level or high level? Whose time is it? Whose time is it? Are we back outside? You know how hard they try to stop us from getting right here? You know how many of us had to die? You know how many of us done taught, done bled, done stood on these stages, done marched, and got beat down, done been hanged, and been lynched? We done fought for the right to read, to give knowledge to our people, to resurrect the dead. But we here. Like he was just very, very knowledgeable, um, very strong. He's like a leader. Positive vibrations, positive frequency. Very well spoken, a lot of energy, a lot of information. And I thought this is someone I'd love for my son to meet. I just feel like if a lot of our brothers and sisters tap in, that we will get ourselves out of this financial stump that we're in, you know? And you know, we'll just be able to manifest and create the destiny that we really want because everything is in the mind. So I bought two tickets for me and my sons. Come out, pay for that VIP. So I want him to see men that are putting action behind their words. He's kind of like the great brother to help you strengthen that. He's bringing together a powerful group of individuals who are on a higher level, um, who want to see their, their people succeed and have the gift of knowledge to give to our young brothers and sisters. Our world order, right. you understand? Yeah, y'all get that. <laughs> I'm happy that I paid for that. We at low level, we at high level. Um, boo! Hey, say what you mean, mean what you say. Say it with your chest, say it with your chest, say it with your chest. I don't play checkers, I play chess. I'ma check if you need to be checked. I'ma fix you if you need to be blessed. I'ma correct you if you need to be correct. Something on your mind, say it with... I got something to say from the top of my lungs. I'm proud who I become. I used to be numb, young, crashing out, saying what I want, lashing out because I couldn't get what I wanted. Was something deeper I was finding in the moment, but the next second I was in the jungle, hunting, didn't really want nothing. Not too expressive, little bit sensitive. Peace to the gods, peace to the earth. How y'all doing? Blessings, blessings. Blessings. How my beautiful melanated people doing out there? Bless up. Peace, God. Bless y'all. Y'all looking beautiful. Y'all want to learn today? Y'all ready for some knowledge? All right, so look, I come from a Hebraic background. So before I start this presentation, I want to sing a song in Hebrew to y'all. I translate it into English when we done. So if y'all can, stand to y'all feet. I don't knock anybody religion, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Hebrew, whether you're Christian, whether you follow the Kemet, whatever. Shalom, shalom, alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hotep, hotep. Namaste. But I'm going to do my thing. Bow your heads, spread forth your hands. I need y'all to feel me. Ya bareka, ya Yahweh, Yahweh, Elika, Vikuneka, Yosa, Yahweh, Ponav, Elika, they are same, look at they are same, look at Ya bareka Yahweh, veish merika Yahweh ya erpona elika vikuneka Yesa Yahweh 
פונה וליקה ויעשם לקה שלום ויעשם לקה שלום אמן אמן אשי אשי What that means in English is the Most High shall bless you, all of you. The Most High shall keep you. The Most High Creator shall shine his face upon y'all. He will bless y'all or she will bless y'all and it will bring you peace. Shalom. Amen? Shalom. All right, y'all gonna sit down, man. How y'all feeling? Y'all feeling good? Y'all yeah. know I'm finna talk about y'all, right? I seen all y'all in that alcohol line. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm gonna wait till y'all sit down. We ain't got that long, y'all, so I'm not rushing y'all, but I really want y'all to pay attention to this information. I came out here to teach y'all a new concept, to teach y'all a new way and a new perspective on how to look at your bodies, how to look at your spiritual sense, how to look at everything in this reality. So this new concept I'm teaching y'all is that disease is an illusion. Can y'all say that with me? Disease is an illusion. What if I told you that you were wonderfully and miraculously made? What if I told you that you are a special and a chosen peculiar people? What if I told you that the same way that you fall down on that bicycle when you are four to 10 years old and you get a scratch and how it grows and you look at your knee right now and that scar is not there anymore, these same things and processes of cellular regeneration can happen with your eternal organs. See, a lot of people say internal, but we are an eternal people. So with your eternal organs. So what if disease is only illusion? Let's take y'all through that. Next slide. The cough. Have anybody ever been around somebody and they was coughing? <coughs> <coughs> Have y'all ever felt y'all chest and felt what was on y'all hands when y'all coughed? A lot of people associate this with a cold, a lot of people associate this with a virus, a lot of people associate this with disease. But what happened if a cough <coughs> was your body natural way of breaking up a coagulated mucus inside the bronchial tubes? See, but you go to the doctor and what the doctor tell you to do is get cough suppressive therapy. They give you cough syrup to actually stop the cough, when the actual cough <coughs> is to actually break up or coagulate mucus to expectorate it out of the body. So is the cough the disease or is the cough helping the body get rid of so-called disease? Ooh wee, next slide. Ooh wee. What about what they would call sternutation? Sternutation is nothing but a sneeze. Hut chew. If you put your hand in front of your mouth and you even fake a sneeze, you will feel a bunch of particles hit your hand. But if you go to the allopathic community and you go to the doctor, they tell you a cough, uh -huh, a sneeze, a chew is a virus, a disease, or you're going through cold and flu-like symptoms. But if you listen to your body, see, we done listening to what people are telling us. It's time to start listening and being in tune with your body. If you listen to your body and you sneeze, ha -choo, you will see what's happening is the bronchial tubes is actually squeezing. Air is being pumped from the lungs so fast at a PSI pressure and it's actually pushing particles out of your nose and mouth. And guess what? When you test these particles, most of these particles is toxemia. Most of these particles is dead cells. Most of these particles is unused nitrogen that you're breathing in from the air. So a cough <coughs> is the body healing itself. A sneeze, ha -choo, is the body what? Yeah. Healing itself. Next slide. What about a fever? How many of y'all get scared and run your children to the doctor's office or to the emergency room because y'all see 102 and 103 on a thermometer? What happened if the body have a natural capability of getting hot by the basal temperature of the thyroid when it senses any type of foreign invaders inside of the body and it does this to heat up the body to kill a lot of bacteria. Bacteria that's bad for the body. 
or it heat up things to bring things into circulation because we know that the goodies are in the blood. Things like your macrophages, things like all of your phytonutrients, things like all your bioflavonoids, things like all your, uh, your phytophotons, these things are in the bloodstream. But if your circulation is poor, the body will kick itself into a fever to thin out the blood for you can get all of those goodies into the area that need to be repaired. So we got a cough, uh-huh, is the body healing itself. We got a sneeze, ha-choo, is the body healing itself. We got a fever, which is bringing things into circulation and killing the actual bacteria, which means the body is doing what, y'all? But we have been taught by the allopathic community that all these things is diseases. They call them symptoms. Yes, they are symptoms, but it's symptoms of the body, what? Healing itself. So today, we are here to change the entire concept of how you view your, how you view your body, your food, and disease. Y'all understand? Next slide. What about inflammation? I hear this a whole lot. Inflammation is the cause of all diseases. Mucus is the cause of all diseases. When you look at any disease, you will find what? Inflammation. But what happened is inflammation was actually a way of the body localizing the actual disease for it won't spread anymore. Not only is it for localizing it, but it actually is for damage or acidic areas to prevent the spread of damaging agents to nearby tissues. Also to dispose of cellular debris and pathogens, setting a stage for cellular repair. Did you know you cannot even get a scab without inflammation? Did you know that your wound cannot heal over without inflammation? Did you know you cannot bring things into the circulatory system without inflammation? But we told a cough is a disease. We're told a sneeze is a disease. We're told a fever is part of a disease. We're told inflammation is a disease, but if you look and you understand your eternal body, this magnificent, beautiful, melanated body that was created by our creator, it's actually your body having the capability of healing itself. Next slide. What about the virus? Yeah, ooh -wee. What about the virus? A lot of people are scared of virus. The coronavirus. The COVID-19 virus. The HIV virus. The AIDS virus. Which that's a whole nother topic to talk about. Because remember, it's time to change the way we look at disease. These concepts amongst our people, our melanated indigenous African people need to shift. Because all of these things are an illusion. What about a virus? Did y'all know a virus is nothing but a broken down, unstable protein? You think I'm lying? Take out your phone, go on common Google and Google what is a virus made, of, made out of. Most of the time you're gonna hear a glycoprotein. You have something inside your cells called a lysosome. The lysosome inside your cells actually act as a digestive system of the cells. Sometimes this digestive secretion that comes from the cells is supposed to break down these proteins, and it don't. So when these proteins get halfway broken down, they roam around in the body, and they start tearing shit up. Guess what they call this? A virus. But guess what these proteins do? They initiate a detoxification mechanism. And usually the virus detoxification mechanism bring on symptoms. Guess what these symptoms is? A cough, a sneeze, inflammation, everything that we just went through. So is a virus actually the body producing protein foreign particles to kick the body into a detoxification mechanism because you need to detox but you won't because you're eating all the wrong foods and drinking all the wrong substances? Remember, we have to shift and change the way we look at disease. So even a virus heals the body. Did you know if there wasn't any viruses on planet Earth, you wouldn't even exist? But we've been made to be scared of viruses, huh? To go get COVID-19 vaccinations. You gotta have your vaccination card. You gotta have your vaccination ticket. You gotta do this and do that. Why is they pushing fear into our people so much? And what is it about you that they target you for every experiment? What is about that melanin? What is about that covenant blood? Who are you? You are very special. You're very amazing. You're the gods and the goddesses of this realm. Next slide. Which we've proven too, by the way. Bacteria infection. They taught y'all this was a disease. What happened if trillions of years ago, bacteria actually was in existence? 
Then they finally found the host due to prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Then they actually merged with the host called the human being or the first human, which is our ancestors. And once they seen that these bacteria was in the human being, whenever the human being body got acidic because it threw off its potential hydrogen or what we call pH balance, what the bacteria main purpose and sole position was, was to eat the acids. So if bacteria, main sole purpose is to eat acids and your body is acidic, guess what the bacteria are gonna do? It's free fucking food. Let's mate, let's overpopulate and let's go to the acidic area for we can eat the what? Acids. So when you see a body is highly acidic, you see bacteria infection. So is a bacteria infection really bad? And then what they do is they will give you antibiotics. Anti means against, bio means what y'all? Life. So they'll give you an antibiotic, kill the bacteria. When the bacteria was there to eat the actual acids, you get rid of the bacteria. You don't do nothing about the root cause of your disease, which is the what? Acids. So who concept of disease is wrong? Mine's or theirs? We. Next slide. What about skin disorders? Everybody talk about psoriasis. Talk about herpes. Talk about eczema. Talk about all these different diseases. What happened if your skin was actually connected to your brain? Something called the ectoderm, and this happened during embryology. And your skin is actually smart, and it fires off neurons in your hair, scans the environment, and it actually brings back intelligence to the body to tell the body how to interact with its environment. What happened if the skin acts as the third kidney of the body, meaning to have pores, things can get out, things can get in? What happened if your kidneys is not working? The filtration mechanism of the nephron of the kidneys is not kicking and filtrating out all of the toxemia in the body. Guess what the skin would do? Damn, kidneys, I love you enough. I don't want to die. So since the kidneys are not filtrating the metabolic waste out of the body through the urine, let me open up my pores of my skin and I'm going to start taking a poop for you. So then you start seeing rashes. You start seeing eczema. You start seeing acne. You start seeing all these different things on the skin. They will go to a dermatologist and they will tell you, you have a skin disease. But hold on. If we change this concept and the way that we look at disease, my skin is actually taking a poop because my cells are constipated and can't take a poop for themselves. So is a skin disorder a disease or is the body natural way of healing itself? Is y'all keeping up with this? All yeah. oh, praises. Next slide. Mucus. Oh, shit. Mucus is the cause of disease. What if I told you that mucus is the greatest defense mechanism in your body? What if I told you that mucus have monosaccharides in it, which is sugar, meaning it has its own food supply? What if I told you that mucus have something called macrophages in it? And macrophages is a part of the so-called immunological system. It's actually a part of something called the lymphatic defense system. In the mucous membrane have something called T cells, which stands for thymus gland cells, B cells, it stands for bone marrow cells. And these things get initiated when the body pH balance get thrown off or a traumatic experience happens to the body or if you're eating foreign foods or acidic forming foods. And mucus have another mineral that's highly electrical called calcium monophosphate in it. And what calcium is, calcium is a buffering mineral to actual acids, meaning calcium will come and buffer out the acidic waste in your body and neutralize it for you won't die of toxemia. So if mucus have all of the things inside of it that the lymphatic system and the immune system have inside of it to actually kill diseases and to bring the body back into a balance of homeostasis, then how can mucus be the cause of disease? It sounds like mucus is actually a defense. What happens is when you see that mucus expectorating, you never change your diet. When you see that mucus building up, you never change what you're drinking. When you see that mucus being excessive, you never change your actual environment. So mucus clogs and it drowns the cells and it deprives the cells of oxygen. And when the cells become deprived of oxygen, just like if you get deprived of oxygen, you suffocate and you what? Die. But let's change the concept. Is mucus the cause of disease or is mucus a defense and us abusing the body miraculous way of healing itself is the true disease. It's time to change the way we look at our bodies. It's time to change the way we look at how our minds interact with our bodies. It's time to change the way our spirit and our minds interact with our bodies. It's time to change the way we interact with our environment. Do y'all understand me? 
Next slide. Let's talk about the sales. In order for me to truly, truly bring home what I'm talking about, we have to bring this down to a cellular structure. Now, if you look at this chart, we see that cells are made of atoms. Atoms then make molecules. Molecules then make cells. These cells then make what you would call cellular tissues. These cellular tissues then make organs. These organs make organ systems. And then the organ systems, when all 12 to 13 of them are put together, the reason why I said 12 and 13, melanated people have 13 organ systems. Caucasians have 12, and this is scientifically proven. Yes, we are very, very biologically different on a molecular structure than any species on planet Earth. We are a specimen of God himself. And we are a specimen of God is herself. I'm a biochemist. It amazed me when I really start studying the molecular structure of our people. I get wild every time. Studying the body, studying, you know, nature made me change my whole entire concept of religion. Because I'm like, damn. We the very gods and earth that the Bible was speaking about. I'm thinking these are superheroes or something that I can never really obtain when it was us the whole time. It even made me change the way I look at superheroes and Superman and, and Flash. And then you start studying our history, the, the transgenerational epigenetic history of our people. We was the one running fast. We was the one flying, jumping off of buildings. We, and we still doing it. Have you ever seen a seven foot man dribble a ball in his leg, go to the free throw, jump from the free throw and dunk it in the, how the hell is he flying like that? That's that melanin. And I'm trying to show y'all how to preserve your melanin. Is y'all with me? So, atoms make up molecules. Molecules make up cells. Cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs. Organs make up organ systems. Organ systems make up a melanated organism. So if this organism is made of cells and you have a so-called disease in your heart, is the heart the issue or is the cells that make up the heart the issues? This is how you truly heal so-called disease. You have to heal it at the cellular level. Is y'all ready to dive deep into the black man and black woman cells? Let's do it. Next slide. Now, the beautiful thing about our bodies is, as above, so below. As within, so without. Whatever goes up, must come down, right? Y'all know the concept of duality. The beautiful thing about our bodies is, our bodies is made of 150 trillion cells. Every other species only have 50 trillion cells. But you, beautiful melanated people, have 150 trillion cells. You got so many cells, you got shit to just spare. That's how your body can heal itself so fast. But the crazy part is, about these cells, out of 150 trillion cells, 100 trillion of them cells belong to bacteria. This bacteria is heavily documented to not even come from this realm. So if the body is made of 150 trillion cells, and 100, and 100 trillion of them cells is made of bacteria that doesn't come from Earth, and only 50 trillion of them cells come from Earth for what they call human cells, who the hell are you? Wouldn't that mean that you don't even come from this Earth? Huh? And then if you look at the diversity of the bacteria, no other species have bacteria like you. And then, this is how you know they don't understand disease. Since the black woman has so much diversity of the actual microbial network inside of her vagina canal, they say she constantly get bacteria vaginosis. What happened if there's not bacteria vaginosis? What happened is the standards that y'all are being tested by is actually gauged upon the actual statistics of a 40-year-old white Caucasian male. And then you send, you send a 14-year-old so-called African-American black little woman to the doctor and base her blood work, her CBC chart, her white blood count off of a 40-year-old white man. Do y'all think it's going to read the same thing? So, of course, she have bacteria vaginosis. Of course, she have acidic buildup inside of her vagina canal. Of course, you're going to say these things are going to do this and this. We have to start thinking about building our own schools, building our own hospitals, building our own herbal clinics. Yes. Because we are different. Different don't mean we need to start a race war. Different don't mean we need to hate other people. All different mean is mean you, you so miraculous, you need to love yourself a little bit more. You feel me? Now check this out. So the body is made of 150 trillion cells. Each 150 trillion cells act as your body. So there's 150 trillion miniature yous inside your body that make up who you are, that look just like you, act just like you, and renew her through reality just like you. What do you mean by this, y'all? I know y'all here like thinking that. So I'm gonna tell y'all. So you know how your body has something called organs? 
right? An organ which will be your heart, which will be your lungs, your digestive system, your kidneys, your adrenals, your liver, your pancreas, things like that. What happened if all the 150 trillion microscopic cells in you have something called organelles? Now we're getting down to the molecular structure. So if you can have organ failure as a human being, can a cell have organelle failure as a cell? Oh, we. See, now y'all finna learn some fundamental principles that I have you living forever. Peace family, it's 19 Keys. We back for another 19 minutes. 19 minutes. 19 minutes. 19 minutes. That only happens when I get a service. What's happening with your God, man? Bless us. Respect this duo. How <laughs> <laughs> you doing, Ken? I'm alright, man. How you feeling? Man? I'm proud of you. Oh my God. No, for real, man. You out here holding this shit down, bro. Yeah, sorry. Man, for real. You, you bouncing around Africa and shit. I'm like, man, oh my God, man, we got to demonstrate. What's up, man? Yeah, I got to get you on. That's what I was just talking about getting y'all yeah, on. We definitely got to work that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. We got to do it. I love the transition, man. I love the, I love the growth, man. I love the maturity of everything you're doing. I see the intentionality of what you're building and taking it from what you built and what you're leveraging and, you know, taking it to a different mindset, yeah, you know, what, what the legacy going to be built off yeah, of. Yeah, that's all we got, bro. And, 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 like, and likewise, you know, I, I, I respect the way you're going about it. I'm saying yeah, because you stand, you standing solid on it. I respect that shit. You he, see it, you gonna stand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't bold. Yeah. Nah, man. Where you originally from? Oakland. What? Yeah. yeah. Tell me about it. Man, you know, I, that's a lot to tell. I got a lot of stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give me the short version, though. Like. And so I grew up in Oakland and St. Louis, so right. I got the, the worst of both worlds, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So in Oakland, that's where I got my militant Muslim side from. Mm -hmm. St. Louis is where we got the streets, got it. you know what I mean? Got so it. my first time listening to Trap and Die documentary on the south side of St. Louis when we was actually in the streets, okay. you know what I'm saying? But I grew up under a Muslim fold, but these Muslims is a little different, right? So at that particular time, you know, they were owners, right? So they had a, a whole EMF service. They had bakeries, security services, schools. So I seen black men with money at an early age. Right. We riding through an all black motorcades. Right. You know what I mean? You would think it was BMF, but instead it's the black Muslims. Mm -hmm. That's how we moved in Oakland. Yeah, right. So it's like for me, my paradigm was different growing up in it. Right. And then being in the streets, they give me a different experience to have empathy because I can wear many different crowns because I done been on both sides of it. Yeah, right. So now, you know, I, I feel like my experiences that I have are very unique. They right. just make me who I am. I agree. So that's why it ain't no folding. It's right. like I was only made one way, right. <laughs> and that's to do but, this. But the way you get it off, though, is that it makes sense because for you to be from Oakland mm -hmm. and then you to have that, it, com it, it comes across to us like fresh, yeah, and yeah. new. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just yeah, like, definitely. Oh, you know I can mean, tell you, I mean, like the, the new you know modern day mop. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to emulate something. It's in me, so I got to do it my way, though. Yeah, right. You feel me? Like yeah, I think right. a lot of people they pick it up and they say, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I need to do it like them. Right. You can't do it like them because they had to do it like them for their time. Right. You know what I mean? The only right. way it's sustainable if you do it your way. Yeah, right. Right. So a lot of people they ain't like it in the beginning, but can't argue with results. So, so as you going around and you doing like these, these, uh, these, these, these speaking engagements, mm -hmm. it's, it's just different. So for me, it's like it's different lectures, it's different topics. Okay. Right. So we we get the cover. I always started speaking on all the things I'm interested in. I never right. niche myself. Right. So therefore, I might talk about spirituality, and we might talk about business. Right. right. Then we might talk about masculine. We might talk about the streets. We might talk about hip hop, because all of these things, I'm the full spectrum. Right. right, so we wanted to do the tour in a way where I'm like, no, give me the theaters. I want to prove that we can sell these out. So it's like it's a new archetype brand. Right, so now we've proven that theater model. We've proven the brand can go tour. So now a person can't have excuses. So we're right. like, no, we didn't demonstrate everything, right. and everything is self funded. Right. What's, what's next, though? Next, man, we got a lot of different things. So I really want to continue to bid out this media side. Okay. I want to, uh, we got some things called High Level Land coming. We got books coming, of course, that's already here, but it's about duplication, so we globalizing the brand. Okay. So we're going to have different branches in different cities, especially on the media side, right? The other stuff, we already got different businesses that we do, but I really want to take over media because I believe 
the way that we can do it to be done in a way that ain't never been done. Yeah, because it is, I mean, you, you got the right idea because, you know, back then the brothers were having to pass out flies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you're doing now is like click, click. Yeah. Oh, wow. But I used to think about that like, <laughs> you can go knock on a thousand doors <laughs> right. and you can make one post and reach a thousand okay, people. So you say I hit you wrong. I'm about efficiency. Yeah. I want to be effective. No, I've been, I've been, I've been talking about yeah. Yeah. I was saying to you earlier, like, yo, we got to go viral today. You right, know what I mean? Right, Just right. stuff. What's some joint you be tips with you? that you're saying and no, yo, I'm gonna say this, this thing will go viral. Cause now Gigi doing a lot of speaking. I don't really have a, a specific way in that particular capacity, especially now. I think maybe earlier on it was maybe some tactics. Yeah, now it's organic. more organic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it organic. Because I don't, I don't even talk about it. I know organic, trending. but you know certain you, things. You know, you know like, like when I drop when I develop a re like if I develop a passionate stance on something. Yeah. I know in that moment if I record this and say it to the world, it's gonna go. Yeah, right. you that's know what I mean. Saying. So Stuff, for yeah. me, it's only operating when I'm actually passionate yeah. Yeah. versus when the algorithm yeah. tell me to move. Yeah. So it's all it's all on the interviews, big dog. Yeah. You know, I got this yeah. shit in me. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's too much fast consumption, man. Hey, when, right when, when you create right a classic, <laughs> like what you did, you created a classic. What 50 did, they created classics, right? So you can tour on that. Yeah, right. Everybody doing fast consumption. Right. You create something for the moment. You ain't thinking yeah. about the future. Yeah, right. I think about the future with everything. So not just my perspective, but your perspective. Yeah. So when you engage and you engage, everybody can get a level of value. But then from a time perspective, I don't just want this space now. I want time for the next decade yeah, or two. Right. Yeah, right. So somebody engages with it years from now, they go look at this picture, this moment this video, they can get the same energy that somebody that lived in it at that moment. That's what it's about. Man. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you came through the island. Man. Yeah, man. Anything, to, man. anything I could do on my end, bro, I'm here. Definitely. And I'm, and I'm, I'm giving you flowers, bro. I'm proud of you, man. man I appreciate this guy it. here, too. Yes, yeah. This guy here, too, man. It's cool. Yeah. This guy in the world right here, man. So check this out. If you look at the nucleus of an organelle functioning, it actually functions as the ovaries of the cells, which give birth to a ribosome. So inside of your cells, you have something called the nucleus. Inside this nucleus, or what you call new sun, you actually have DNA strands. DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. Can y'all say that with me? Deoxy, ribose, nucleic acid. Deoxy, ribose, nucleic acid. This is actually the informational library within inside of the black man's and the black woman body. Deep within those are chromosomes and histones. Inside these histones, you have something called the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records is this endless information of it's a big old vast library. Every language that ever exists is inside of you right now. You don't learn new languages, you remember new languages. Huh? Have you ever heard of somebody that know how to prophesize? They can predict the future. You're not prophesying or predicting anything. You're tapping within your crystals of your actual DNA and you're bringing forth events before they happen. All these things and everything that you need as a black goddess and a black God is already within you. But if I teach you the correct way to look at disease, it will change and shift the way that you look at reality. This will unlock that very junk DNA that they're keeping junk DNA on purpose. Then you will rise to your God self and then what? You can't be a consumer no more. You can't, pro you can't, pro hey, straight up. You won't spend three trillions of dollars on pharmaceutical drugs no more. You won't go to the grocery stores and buy bread and beans and all these other things that you think you're supposed to be eating that's actually killing the molecular structure of your body. When you learn true knowledge of self, that's what brings wealth. See, we got it backwards. We want to dive into the wealth and run for the bag and get into the money, but we on our deathbed doing it. Then we want to bring up things like generational wealth. How can you pass wealth down through the generations if your epigenetic inheritance is sick, full of mucus, full of acids, and everybody coming through you have the same mutation of cells? What is money going to do for you if you can't spend this shit? Do y'all really understand what I just said? So what is first priority? The bag? or your body, because the body spins the bag. Ooh wee, ooh wee, next slide. So we just looked at the nucleus of the cell of what we call new sun that actually act as the birth canal of the cell. Now we're looking at the actual rough endo, uh, endoplastic reticulum, which is the organelle. This actually functions as the birth canal of the cell. So look, the cells actually give birth through something called the ribosomes. Just like a beautiful melanated woman spread her hips and that baby drop crowning out and she, her water breaks and she squat, not lay flat on her back, 
Because that don't make no sense at all. That is European, Greco-Roman type of birth. That melanated woman squats, and she used to catch her own baby, y'all. That's crazy, right? Oh, we got to talk about that. But anyways, just like that melanated woman can birth a baby out of her canal, new life out of her canal, the same thing happens when you start talking about the reticulum. It actually functions as the birth canal, and the ribosome give birth to a new cell. Usually, this is called messenger RNA. Say that with me. Messenger RNA which is a photographic picture of DNA. See that? The body is miraculous. So literally, the cells have organelles. The organelles of the cells actually move and function like the organs that make up your body. Remember that I told you the atoms make up molecules, molecules make up cells, cells make up tissues, tissues then make up organs, organs make up organ systems, and these organ systems make a full-grown organism called a human being? When you dive deep into the cell, the cell is a replica of your whole entire body, and you have 150 trillion of them. You can't tell me God ain't real. How did that even work like that? Yeah, let's give a round of applause to God. Straight up. That's power. I'm actually going getting to a point here, y'all. I know y'all like, okay, Yaki, what are you talking about, and where is this going? We actually going somewhere. All right, so y'all on this journey with me? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Next slide. I see you too, goddess. I see you too. All right, next slide. This just shows you that the cells have testicles. Next slide. Now, I really want to talk about the... Sm next slide. I must have put that in there twice. I'm blaming it on you, Jay. You put that in there twice, not me. All right, I really want to talk about the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the organelle of the cell, but the mitochondria is not a part of the body. It's like host with the body. It has its own DNA. It has its own thought pattern. It defecates. It goes to the bathroom. It communicates with other cells. This thing inside the cell acts as the respiratory system of the cell, and it acts as the digestive system of the cell. But it hasn't been inside of the human genome for too long. This thing is like an alien, and it's actual maternal in nature. It's literally a part of the proliferation of all life, and it's act as a woman. This is a female. This is a feminine energy. And I call her Mother Mitochondria. Say that with me. Mother Mitochondria. Did you know without this beautiful, feminine, woman organelle, you would not be able to breathe? You will not be, the only point, the only reason why you breathe, let's do a breath exercise real quick. On the count of three, I want you to breathe in deeply through your nasal passage. I want you to hold it for four seconds. Then I want you to exhale for four seconds. I'm gonna show y'all, so. I wanna show y'all what we just did. Come on, one, two, three. What we did was we took oxygen from the atmosphere. The oxygen went into our bodies. We used something called glycolysis, which is what y'all drinking on. All y'all got drinks is nothing but fermented sugar. These sugars, yeah, I'm, I'm on y'all heads tonight. <laughs> I'm being biased, I'm, not, I'm being biased, I'm letting y'all know. These sugars actually ferment and it breaks down into something called glucose. This glucose then goes through the mitochondria and it goes through something called a Krebs cycle, or what you would call a citric acid cycle. And what the citric acid cycle does is it starts to break these sugars down into something called pyruvates. These pyruvates then actually pulls oxygen from hemoglobin, showing you why hemoglobin and iron phosphate is so, so important when it comes to the melanated body. When you get to Caucasian skies, do see a few Caucasian here, your mineral is actually calcium, calcium. But our minerals is iron phosphate. So it strips and it pulls iron phosphate in the body. You got iron phosphate, you have pyruvate, which come from uh, actual glucose and then you have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide actually comes from what you breathe out, but you try to keep it in your body. These things mix together then break down and create a water. This water is actually used as fuel for the mitochondria can fire off a of fuel for your cells to actually have vitality, power, and this power is called ATP. I talk about it all the time, adenosine triphosphate. Can y'all say that with me? Adenosine triphosphate. You can't live without adenosine triphosphate. 
And I'm going to show you why we call these things diseases and how your body is constantly trying to keep this in homeostasis. And the moment that you start basically depriving your cells of oxygen, that's when all these symptoms start kicking in for your body can detoxify itself, for it can bring the adequate amount of oxygen back in the body, for you can be back into a balance of homeostasis. I don't know one disease that's a true disease, y'all. Every disease that I've been studying for the last 10 to 12 years is an actual symptomology of the body trying to heal itself. And I, I want anybody can challenge me on this. We can sit down and we can bring forth the information if you can prove me wrong. That is how convicted and that's how much evidence and proof I got for this so-called theory that I'm talking about. Because it's not a theory because it's been proven for over 100 years. They've actually been proving this since 1902. They're just digging in books. They bury the books. They burn the books. They make sure that they don't put it on Google. Because this information is very vital and important to a people. Because if you have your health, you have your freedom. Seriously, seriously. Now, let's just read what the mitochondria do. It says the mitochondria takes oxygen and releases carbon dioxide, which is CO2, with ATP similar to breathing, fuels, most, most activities of the cells. The inner structure is defaulted many times to allow the maximum area of cellular respiration. You literally breathe to feed mitochondria. Everything you do in your life is for this Mother mitochondria right here, this female. This changed the concept of, 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 of man to be womanized, I'm telling you. Because when you get down to the fundamental principles of what makes us human beings, it's a feminine aspect. And the moment that you stop giving to mama, you die. It just made me look at, well, remember when I first started studying, it just made me look at women totally different. I just try to call my wives and apologize. I'm sorry, I, I, don't know, I don't know what I've been doing. I've been on a honcho trip. I've been throwing my masculine energy around too much, but dang, the very principles that make up my cells, and these cells make up my tissues, these tissues make up my organs, these organs make up who I am, and these are all fundicated off of an actual maternal organelle called the mitochondria, and if I don't feed her, I live my life to serve her. And the moment that I stop serving her, I die and I suffocate? That sounds painful as hell for not being, you know, good to your woman, don't it? Just saying. I bet the man in here, look at this nigga. Y'all be all right. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> now, this is what I want to talk about. This is called aerobic respiration. So aerobic process is basically when the cells need to use oxygen to actually fire off ATP. You cannot walk around, you cannot breathe, you cannot drink, you cannot eat, you cannot think, you cannot do nothing without ATP. It's literally the fuel for the body. Just like you pull up to a gas station and you put fuel in your car and that car's fuel is actually used to turn the ignition on for you can go, then you got the oil in your car which is used for the blood. See that? If you look at the car mechanism, it's built just like our body. The fuel for your car is called ATP. Usually it's fructose. Glucose is secondary. When you talk about melanated beans, we're naturally frugivores. So the fruit gives you the highest yielding ATP that you can get. But if you don't get the fructose, usually it's glucose, and that's the thing that we eat on an everyday basis. That's why y'all need to tap into y'all frugivore diets, because that is a high essential fuel for the body. It's, it's damn near like that 93, that premium gas. You know what I'm saying? Then when you start eating vegetables, that's your, that's your uh, what, that, what is that? What's that middle part? 89, 86? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's semi. That's got some unleaded in there and there. Then you got your meats and your stuff like that. That's your straight, regular gas. You hear me? Who all in here on that premium? Raise your hand. Y'all lying. Yeah, all right. I ain't never been in a room with that many frugivores in my life. I love it, though. It's called manifestating, right? Manifestation. I get it. I get it. So check this out. The aerobic respiration, chemical process in which oxygen is used to make energy from carbohydrates and what we call sugars. Also called aerobic metabolism, cell respiration, or oxidative metabolism. Whenever this oxidative metabolism stops working and functioning, the body's gonna kick in its healing modality. Because remember, the body was given the miraculous ability to heal itself, right? So if you're not bringing in enough oxygen because you're drinking the wrong things, you're in the wrong environment, you eat eating acidic forming foods, you're eating mucus forming foods, the body is not gonna have enough oxygen to convert over to ATP. So guess what the body does? It uses the 100 trillion cells that I just told you about, which is these bacteria organelles, and they start going through something called fermentation. Fermentation don't have to go through, uh, don't need oxygen to fire off ATP. Y'all wanna know another living organism that do the same thing? Fungus, mushrooms. Y'all see mushrooms growing, it doesn't need oxygen. It goes through fermentation. Now check how this works. Next slide. 
So cellular oxidation. During the aerobic respiration, the oxygen taken in by the cell combines with glucose to produce energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, and the cell expels carbon dioxide and water. This is an oxidative reaction in which glucose is oxidized and oxygen is reduced. And that oxygen gets reduced and it gets turned into water, and that water is used as fuel, right? Check this out. Let's see what happens when it don't happen. Next slide. First thing that happened, this is what kicks on when you start starving your cells of oxygen. If you want to die, these are things you need to do. <laughs> See that? We always talk about what to not do. No, let's change. We got to change the perspective, right? So if your ass want to die, here you go. First thing is eat anti-nutrient foods. Anti-nutrient foods is foods that lacks oxygen. They lack amino acids, they lack sugars, or what we call carbohydrates, they lack vitamins, or what you call vital amines. Say vital, vital. amines. Vital. Say vital, vital. Minerals. minerals. You see the real words, but they want to change it and switch shit around if you don't understand what they're saying, so they call it vitamins. What the hell is a vitamin, right? Ele <laughs> electrolytes, minerals. This is called an incomplete molecular structure. So things like processed foods. If it goes through three or more processes before it hits your table, leave it alone because it will, it will starve your cells of oxygen. How many of y'all today ate a whole food? Meaning it was literally from the soil to the table. Don't lie, raise your hand. I actually believe y'all. There's only about two, 10 people. Huh? <laughs> hey, for a clap for them. Clap for them. It's beautiful. We have to make sure that we're eating nutrient-dense food. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, I hear you, Yaki, but what about the soil? The soil don't have any minerals in it. You can actually me remineralize your soil. You can do that to cow manure. You see that? You can do that to grow and raise beds, but we have to start getting into growing our own food. So in order for me to get through this whole presentation, simple thing. If you want to stop eating anti-nutrient foods, guess what you have to do? Grow your own food. And if you can't grow your own food, the best thing you need to do is shop at your local's farmer's market. All right? Now, they got a new thing with, with organic, so we can't be pushing organic too hard no more. I know y'all seen that thing with Appeal and Bill Gates. If y'all seen that, raise your hand. Y'all see what he doing, right? He's genetically modifying and putting the vaccine inside of organic foods and putting a pill sticker on it and saying it's still good to eat. First thing that threw me off wasn't even the vaccine you put in there. You're genetically modifying it. If you're genetically modifying it, you can't call it an organic food. So now they're even lying on the labels. Been doing it, but now they're blatantly putting it in our faces. And what the creator is doing, the creator is forcing us to come together as a collective consciousness and grow our own food. So that's the first step, is to do what? Grow your own food. If you can't do that, which a lot of people can't, especially if you're in New York, I understand that this is a concrete jungle. I don't know how y'all do. Y'all some true soldiers out here. <laughs> the moment me and Jay, Jay, where Jay at? Where Jay? Jay, where Jay? Jay, come here, this is my witness. The moment we stepped off the plane here, I died. <laughs> Am I lying, Jay? We, soon as I landed, I tried to breathe in this air, I got a headache, my stomach started hurting. I'm like, Jay, what's going on? We looked around, we ain't seen no trees. He's like, man, we gotta get to Central Park. <laughs> That's the only place y'all got trees at, which is crazy to me, man. Run, get out, shit, <laughs> get out. <laughs> I'm just, man, I love y'all. I, I truly do, I'm not talking shit. Next slide. <laughs> you say, what you say, y'all be all right? Hey, you know, sometimes y'all need that tough love, especially as black people. Hey, look, next slide. So the first one was anti-nutrient foods. It actually starves the cells in the body of oxygen. When the body does not have oxygen, the cells suffocate and die. The next one are to bring you, if you want to die, remember, that's my logo, right? If you want to die, do this. Dehydrate the cells. And I know y'all thinking, I need more water. If anybody know y'all key, what do I teach? H3O. Yell it out. Let me hear it. H3O2. Juice 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 go to the store get you a juicer don't tell me about bills or nothing there you can go on amazon and get a juicer for 23 dollars matter of fact you can get a hand press juicer for 16 dollars order you some fruits juice your fruits and the beautiful thing about h302 is it comes with all its minerals it comes with all its amino acids it comes from every, every dna's fragment that you need 
and it actually mineralizes the body. There's a difference between water and hydration. Hydration don't mean you're guzzling down a gallon of water a day. Hydration means you have the adequate amount of electrolytes and minerals inside of the body. So if you have a person that only drink two glasses of juices a day versus a woman that drinks a gallon of water a day, but her glasses of juices have more minerals and electrolytes than that gallon of water, who is dehydrated and who is hydrated? Oh, the one that only had two glasses of pressed juice. So dehydration, the lack of electrolytes and mineralization causes dehydration, dry skin, dry lips, fuzzy tongues. You see that? Kidney issues. Huh? All these things are signs of dehydration. Red eyes, dry eyes. Y'all remember that commercial, dry eyes? <laughs> yeah. All this is a form of dehydration. Make sure you mineralize yourself because you are full of minerals. If you look at the word mineral, I'm a Hebrew. I speak fluent Hebrew, write fluent Hebrew, and I'm all of it. So if you look at the word mineral, it actually means from the light above. Men means from. Or means actually light in Hebrew. All means from above. It's actually root word where you get Allah from. So mineral, it actually means from the light above, showing you that you are true children of the sun. You are sun people. You are sun children. I mean, we came from the water, then we evolved into children. That's a whole other topic, though. So make sure that you're drinking your H3O2. If you can't get a hold of H3O2, get you some water, but make sure the water is spring water. All right? And stay away from alkalizing water. Whenever you see water that say alkaline water, run from that shit. Because that means that they took isolated chemistry and put it in the water and called it alkaline. If the water don't say alkaline and it says from a natural spring, that's actually naturally alkaline. So make sure that you find the spring water. And if it's in a bottle, make sure that it's BPA what? Free. Try to find it in a glass. Or buy your own land, dig a well, and use the well water. Just like you have to buy your own land, put some beds down, and grow your own food. Yeah. All right, next one. Next slide. All right, 15 minutes. All right, let's get it. Next one, acidic forming foods. So we see the first one was what, y'all? Who remember? Chicken. <laughs> what, woman? Don't eat chicken. What was my first slide? The things not to do. Anybody remember the first slide of things not to do? Anti-nutrients. Stay away from anti-nutrient foods. Make sure your food is packed with minerals. Make sure your food is packed with simple amino acid structures. Make sure your food is packed with all the phytonutrients and all the bio uh, photons and bioflavonoids you need. The next thing was stay away from dehydration. Make sure that you're kicking in your H3O2. If you cannot get H3O2 from your fruit juices, make sure that you're getting 100% spring water that is naturally alkaline forming because it have minerals in it. Third one is stay away from acidic forming foods, y'all. This is mainly our problem. We're eating things that is bad for our chemistry. All right? Y'all hear me? We it. So look, and I understand that there's a lot of meat eaters in here. I brought my security, though, so I'm ready for y'all today. <laughs> I'm just fucking with y'all. But do y'all own studies on this, y'all. I don't want to sit here and preach about meat and preach about beans and all this. I don't want to get into the back and forth. I love every walk of life, and there's different dispositions on food. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to take the humble way out. I'm going to say, look at this chart and really research for yourself what these things do to the molecular structure, especially when it comes to the black man and the black woman. And if you find that it is acidic forming in nature, you know, cut down on it. Is that cool enough? Yeah. All right, cool. Next slide. Toxic environment. Oh, we. Y'all in New York. Everything in this damn thing toxic. I'm telling you. I got off the plane and died. Literally, I'm telling you. I felt like I was gasping for air. I'm like, dang, the air quality out here has to suck. And mind you, we, just, we came from Philly to here. So going to Philadelphia, I'm talking about, man, I can't wait to get back home and get on my land. And just, I need to hug a tree or something. I'm like, I need oxygen. <laughs> Y'all see my lips? My lips dry? I mean, I'm in a total different environment that's not conducive for myself. So, hey, I give a thumbs up for y'all that's able to survive out here. That means y'all have very strong genetic codes. Straight, give y'allself a round of a goddamn shit. <laughs> we have to get away from these toxic environments. If you look in the back of the city, look at the, look at the black man. He's just depressed, don't know why. Don't even know why. Can't find himself. Don't know why. Probably in the toxic relationships. Don't know why his woman toxic. Because y'all breathing in this damn emission air. Carbon fuels all in the air. Eating chicken wings all day. Probably was standing in that drink line that y'all was standing in getting here. But we ain't going to mention that. 
I ain't gonna hold too much against y'all. But serious note, we have to get away from these toxic airs. And the only way to get away from toxic air is buying your own land. What trees on it? If it doesn't have its own trees on it, plant trees because trees have an amazing capability of drawing carbon dioxide and monoxide out of the air and storing it back into the earth. And then it converts this carbon dioxide and monoxide into oxygen and it breathes out this oxygen and then you breathe in this oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. Do y'all see that symbiotic relationship, that symbiosis? How the trees breathe carbon dioxide um, and then they recycle their energy, they breathe out oxygen, you breathe in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. That goes through the grass, the grass give out oxygen and then all these different cattle, they eat in the grass and they breathing in oxygen and they breathing out carbon dioxide. Everything in the earth works together. Only person that's out of arrangement is the so-called Negro. Everybody in, everybody in, everybody in line except when you get to us. We the only ones. Have you ever seen when a storm come, you see birds fly away? The winter, the winter come, birds fly south. Y'all see that tsunami come, you will see all the sharks go on the shore. All this stuff happening, tornado warnings, everything is dispersed. You don't see no animal around, but guess who you see? Niggas in cars driving to the store, getting blunt material. <laughs> so I gotta go get me a blunt and a, and, a, and a pint of liquor before this storm hit. You the only nigga on the street. Animals and everybody else is in their respectable places because they still have their six and seven cents, but you've been cooking out all the bio photons and the bio flavonoids out of your food because you don't like to eat raw food that you're not in touch with your body no more. And the body is not in touch with the earth or the electrical magnet magnetic grid of the earth. So you're not in tune no more. You're not on their frequency. That's some deep shit, ain't it? Damn. Just saying. So it's time for us to build our own environments. You can do this at home. All you got to do, even if you stay in New York, we got people doing this all the time. I teach y'all, buy plants, especially spider plants. Bring them plants into your household. Watch it increase and filter the air quality in your house. Just watch it. Just by doing that alone. Snake plants. Huh? Snake plants and spider plants. Snake plants is good too. Thanks for that, goddess. Snake plants and spider plants. Very good. For that, it will filter the air. Another thing, buy water filters. Just buy water filters. I understand you probably stay in a high rise or you probably stay in an apartment building. I understand you don't have your own well tapped into, but look, try your best. Go on Amazon and buy a Pelican water system for your shower head and for your sink. Start filtrating your water. Y'all see what I'm saying? There's little stuff that you can do. We don't have to start big. If a million people do something little and put that together as a collective consciousness, we will change the damn world. Y'all agree? Next slide, peace God. All right, so anti-nutrient foods brings on the lack of oxygen. Toxic environment bring on the lack of oxygen. Dehydration bring on the lack of oxygen. Acidic forming food bring on the lack of oxygen. All deprive the cell of what? Oxygen. Without oxygen, you can't breathe. You can go months without food. You can go up to 40 to 50 days without water. Your ass ain't surviving four minutes without oxygen. Right, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of coughing and stink breaths up here. I do that, y'all had that alcohol on y'all breath. Yeah, I'm gonna drive y'all about the alcohol. Hopefully y'all go home, y'all be like, damn, I ain't taking another drink. <laughs> Next slide. So, when the body lack oxygen. How many minutes I got real quick, y'all? 10 minutes? Seven? All right, let's get this. Y'all think I got this in seven minutes? Let's try to wrap this up. All right, I'm going to talk real fast. Catch this. All right, so when the body lack oxygen, remember, the body have the miraculous way of healing itself. So body turns and shifts the actual energy, and it uses the bacteria, and it takes you through something called anaerobic. So aerobic is when the body uses oxygen to form ATP, and you have adenosine triphosphate, and you have the actual capability of firing off all of that fuel for you can walk, live, breathe, talk, eat, sleep, produce, whatever you do. When the body doesn't have oxygen to do that, the body don't want to die. So the body starts utilizing the actual bacteria that make up the cells of the body, and they take it through something called an anaerobic process. The anaerobic process does not need actual oxygen to fire off ATP. What it does is it goes through something called fermentation. All right, next slide. 
Now, the fermentation actually starts within the actual three complexes stage. There's five different complexes in the mitochondria. On the fifth complex, that's when the actual oxygen molecule is produced to create that water through, due to carbon dioxide to fire off. Sometimes we don't even get to this part, so it stops at the three complexes. Next slide. Now, this is the actual three complexes. When you're actually in the Krebs cycle, the Krebs cycle is called citric acid. Citric acid brings on fermentation. When somebody's working out, do y'all ever feel that burn? That's citric and elastic acid building up. That means that the body is deprived of oxygen, so it's trying to find a new way to get energy for you can keep pumping that iron. That is actually called an acidic process or called anaerobic. Anaerobic, where it doesn't need oxygen, but this brings on sickness to the body because fungus set in. This fungus actually kick on all them different symptomologies, symptomologies that I told y'all, which is not a disease, but there's the body way of trying to heal itself for it can bring more oxygen to the cell. Y'all get that? I know that was kind of fast. Next slide. All right, so these are the things that you are missing from your cells when you're eating the wrong things, drinking the wrong things, being subjected to the wrong environments. This thing is called glutathione peroxidase. Did you know glutathione peroxidase actually opens up the NRF2 pathways of the cells for the cells can detoxify itself? But guess what it needs to do that? Oxygen. So without oxygen, you can't open up the meridian pathways of the cells. NRF2 pathway won't open up, and that means all the poop, because remember, the cells eat just like you. The blood feeds the cells of the body. Say that with me, the blood feeds the cells of the body. The lymphatic system cleanses the cells of the body. The nervous system communicates and commands the cells of the body. Guess what all those take? Oxygen. So without oxygen, you can't detoxify. So all the toxemia you've been eating or just living your everyday life, I'm, I'm creating toxins right now just by talking. It's called lactic acid. So what happens? My skin open up, my pores open up, especially my armpits. If y'all see my armpits right now, y'all be like, Yaki, what's going on? <laughs> all this lactic acid just dripping from my pits. Because I'm, I'm, I'm running around, I'm talking. This is just, I'm doing something normal, and I'm creating toxins by just being normal. Imagine you just being normal, creating toxins, and on top of that, you're eating bullshit. Ooh wee, on top of that, you drinking bullshit. On top of that, you in bullshit relationships. On top of that, you entertaining bullshit. Then your environment is bullshit. That's a whole lot of shit, ain't it? Your cells have to get rid of that shit. But if it can't get rid of it, it sticks in the cells. Y'all ever seen poop that stay around? Before it breaks down and start giving life again, it literally decays. So you got acidic poop sitting in your cells because your cells is constipated because you don't have oxygen to provide the NF2 R2 pathways to open up that pathway to eliminate so these cells corrode. When the cell corrode, it dies. It's called cellular death. It's called apoptosis. Can y'all say that with me? Apoptosis. Or they say apoptosis. I say apoptosis. I make up my own words sometimes, y'all. If y'all watch me, y'all know I do. Next one. Now, uh, huh? five minutes. All right, got you. Next one is called cytochrome C oxidase. Cytochrome C oxidase literally is a respiratory electronic strain. This is actually what brings oxygen to the cell. First one is glutathione peroxidase. That brings oxygen to the cell. Next one you don't get is cytochrome C. This brings oxygen to the cell. So we're stopping our bodies from breathing and having cellular respiration where we're eating the wrong things and we're putting our bodies in the wrong environments. We are literally killing ourselves and we're paying. Look, they selling death and guess who buying that shit? We are. Damn. Ooh we. I'm gonna get some of them shirts, some ooh shirts, y'all. I'm telling you. All right. Another one is reductase. So we losing cytochrome C. We losing glutathione uh, peroxidase. Now we're losing reductase, and this is a catalase reduction of a reaction. All these things is what brings the cell or the mitochondria of the cells into that fifth complex. Once they get to that fifth complex, this is when your actual carbon dioxide create oxygen. Oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse itself together, creates water, and this water is used as fuel. So we are coming, we are coming between the fuel making mechanism in our body whenever we're eating or drinking things that we're not supposed to be eating or drinking. Next slide. Next one is catalase. I think y'all know where I'm going, right? It's stopping the body from what? Oxygen. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> now, real quick, two minutes on how to stop all this. First thing you need to do is grow your own what? Food. Second thing is to do what? Plant trees in gardens. Third thing is to limit or cease carbon fuel burning. 
Fourth thing is to what? Now nah, y'all, y'all real quiet on that. Fourth thing is to what? Yeah, y'all better change y'all diets. All right. Fifth thing is what? Refuse to use chemicals. Stop using deodorant. Stop using fluoride filled toothpaste. That stuff causes all types of breast cancers and it causes all types of boils and cysts up under your armpits. Stop using these cleaning products. Do y'all know water, limes, and lemons mixed together will make a hell of a cleaning product? All right. Next one is what? Use organic produce and seeds. Seven is what? Create a solution for plastic. Just figured out at my last seminar, somebody said they didn't have a mushroom that eat plastic. I looked it up, it exists. Y'all gotta look that on yourselves, because plastic is killing the seas, plastic is killing the lakes, the oceans, plastic is throwing off the equilibrium of the earth, so we have to change plastic. Try not to use plastic, and if you got plastic, always recycle it, okay? All right, eighth one is what? Stop wearing mixed fabric. That is lowering the hertz and frequency of your body. Your clothes are killing you. The soles of your feet is killing you. Take off your shoes, ground and wiggle your toes in the grass. Get those electrons in your body to offset the protons. Y'all see what I'm saying? Hey, last but not least is what? Love yourself more. All right, one minute, no homo. Hug yourself real quick, I know it look kind of you know, feminine man, hug yourself, brother. Hug yourself. Say, I love myself. I, love myself. I, am, wealthy. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am, healthy. I am wise. I am, wise. I am intelligent. I am, I am powerful. I am, I am brilliant. I am, I am melanin. I am, melanin. I, am I am that I am. I am God. I, am God. I love myself. I love myself. I love my brother and sister that's next to me. And I love you, Yaki. I want to leave off with this note, y'all. Stop buying from those who are killing you. I'll praise you. Peace, family. There's power, structure, order, community, intelligence, liberation, freedom. These are words that describe what we're doing and what we're building. See, there's a world of individualism out there. You're fighting to try to satisfy your ego instead of being a part of an eco. And once you become a part of an ecosystem, now you have wisdom around you. Now you have intelligence. Now you have a mastermind of those who know more than you. And once you have access to information, technology, community, and education, now you have all the things that you need in order to build your own foundation, your own nation. You understand me? This is my family, and I want you to join it as well. Make sure you tap into the Block World Order so we can get you together. We was talking about growing land, right? Growing your own foods, growing gardens, grow, planting trees, you know, bringing the earth back into a balance of homeostasis, right? So I want to introduce y'all to somebody they call the Acres Boys. And they finna come out and they finna talk to y'all about growing acres, owning your own land and growing your own food, all right? So give them a round of applause, y'all. What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? Hold on, Apollo. What's up, Apollo? What's up? Let's go. We heard the good brother talking about owning land and growing our own food on our own land. So tonight, we're going to get into some land ownership. We're going to talk about all that the land space offers. You know, our good brother, 19 Keys, is always promoting to the community how to invest in the next things that is the future for us. And one of those things is the land industry. So without further ado, me and my partner, we're going to go through a short presentation. Y'all stick with us. Let's have some high energy. Let's keep this thing going. So before, uh -huh. we, so before we get it started, I just need y'all to say one thing for me. Can I get y'all to say land and legacy? Land and legacy. Oh, we ready. I think they're ready, Jay. Let's go. Let's go. So without Let's further go. ado, my name is Ray. My name is Jay. And we are the Anchor Boys. The Acre Boys are active land investors that have invested in over 350 land deals. 
We specialize, we specialize in buying rural vacant land at 25 to 30% on the dollar. Our primary focus tonight is to shed light on that industry that we call hidden in plain sight. That's the land business. And primarily, we want to shed light on people that look, look, that look like us. Currently, we own less than 2% of all agriculture land and less than 1% of all rural land. So that brings us to this point. What can we do to begin to cut into those margins? Let's bring them up. So first and foremost, what is? What is land investing? Land investing is an industry that's been around since the beginning of time. A lot of us understand and typically don't understand what happens with actual land when we're out here in this space. Now, what happens is our business is done completely virtually. Like my partner said, we've done over 350 transactions and have not seen one property in person. The only property we've ever seen in person was our highest asset and our biggest deal to date. It is a 260-acre estate. Talk about it. it Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is a 260 acre estate with a 10,000 square foot mansion on it, three residential homes and two commercial buildings. And understand the power. Once we all come in this room and understand the power of land ownership, this has been kept away from us forever. And now it's time for everybody in here to understand and take advantage. So why is land investing important? Land investing is important because it offers ownership. There could not be a home or building in place unless there was a piece of land on that property first. It's an asset that has been around since the beginning of time, and I seriously doubt that it's going anywhere anytime soon. It is, when purchased correctly, it's one of the safest investments that you could make. It's an asset that could be passed down for generations and generations to come. It offers multiple uses. You can buy it and hold it. It only appreciates in value. You can use it to self-sustain yourself. It provides food and shelter. You can lease it out or you can sell or finance it. Now the interesting part about seller finance agreements is that effectively you become the bank. You set your own rates and your own terms on how you want to get paid inside of a seller finance situation. Now, you, we all know that you can put a home on it or you can put a building on it or you can do what we do. Buy it for pennies on a dollar, turn around and sell it back for double or triple the money online, all from the comfort of your own home. So the ones that own it or put themselves in position to own it, they gain control and power of future commodities, cultures, and climates. So own yours or get caught trespassing on somebody else's. So, where do we invest in land? We primarily invest in land in rural markets. Most traditional investors go with the city, the lights, the camera, the action, the flash. Only one challenge with that, high competition. That's why we focus on rural markets with low competition. So what would make somebody sell us their property at 25 to 30% on a dollar? Number one, the property was inherited. <clears throat> Let's just say you live in San Diego, you inherited a property in Ohio. The likelihood of you tending to that property is not likely. Number two, you bought the property a long time ago, thought you were gonna do, with, do something with it, life happened, and now you're paying taxes on an asset that you're not using. Number three, we deal with trust a lot inside of our business. And trust sometimes look to sell things off of their books. And what happened is we come in once they get the offer from us and they typically accept our offer at 25 to 30% on the dollar. Next, when is the best time to begin land investing? Now is absolutely the best time yes, to begin land investing. We need to educate ourselves on the space so we can go out and take control of these assets, right? So what happens in the land space typically, competition in the land space is typically tremendously low. In contrast to traditional real estate, there's about 150 million realtors across the country, right? You can Google this. There's about 150 million realtors across the country. Inside of the land space, there's less than 10,000 investors in the land space. No disrespect to my realtors. I absolutely love my realtors. I think they do a great job. The good ones actually help us out in our business. 
But in traditional real estate, realtors pull from about 500 million homes across the country. Inside of the land space, we pull from a whopping 1.9 billion acres. That's what we have at our disposal. So with Zoom cities continuously rising and most people looking to get out of these city areas and move out into rural communities for a better way of living or a cheaper way of living, we need to position ourselves to get in front of it before it becomes overcrowded and expensive. So how do we invest in land? Remember, y'all, the land business is a data-driven industry. So what we do is we go into states and counties. We go ahead and see how long properties are sitting on the market and how long it's taken for them to move off of that actual market. Were you aware that there are places that you can go to get your land deal funded for zero dollars out of your pocket? Were you aware that there are places that you can go and get your land deal funded and it's not based off of credit? The credit is from the equity that's based inside of the deal. Yes, sir. I know me and my partner didn't know it at first. We were inside of our actual environment. And when you're inside of an environment, when you don't see people progressing, that's all you see is stagnation. Can y'all agree to that? So what we did is step out of our actual comfort zone. And then once we got out of our comfort zone, we realized all the things that were out there and actually ready for us at that point. Our mentor always told us there are four stages to competence in land and business. There's unconscious competence uh -huh. where you're at the level where you don't know anything. There's conscious competence where at least you're aware you don't know anything. There's conscious competence, which means you're aware, but you still have to physically apply. And the fourth level, which is the highest level, no pun intended, is unconscious competence, which means you're doing the right thing automatically because you're programmed to do so. Yo, hold on. Y'all give it up for my boy. This is my boy first time. Yes, sir. This is his first time on the stage, man. Uh-huh, uh-huh, let's go. Yes, sir. So in closing, we all know the history of land ownership in African Americans in this country. We all know that the Homestead Act didn't particularly work out in African Americans' favor. That's why it is our mission, the Acre Boys, to tell as many as people that look like us about the land space and all that it offers. We believe that if many more of you know about the land space, many more of you will be capitalizing and monetizing on all that it offers. Here's some interesting, interesting points. We don't need to focus on these city areas that's already developed, that, o that already major players are playing these, in these areas. Now, if you have major coins, feel free to invest in these areas. But for the most of us, we need to focus where the common person can jump in, make some sound investments. Our littlest and minimal deal that we have done, we bought a piece of land for $50. We all have $50 to invest in Real a so. piece of dirt. Now, another interesting point. This is New York City, correct? Right outside of New York City, once you go upstate in a, uh, a county called Orange County, there's a new town called Palm Tree. Orange uh -huh. County people in the building. What's uh -huh, up? Uh -huh. What's up? We got one. <laughs> but uh, in Orange County, and I'm sure she could testify to this, there's a new town that was incorporated in 2019 called Palm Tree, making it the first new town in the state of New York in the last 40 years. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the opportunities that we all have Let's go out and build our own new towns. Let's go out and find our own new cities. Let's go. Right? We all can go out and grab a five acre, grab a 10 acre, a 15 acre, a 20 acre, and instead of fighting for blocks that we don't own, how about actually owning them? Talk heavy. How cool would it be, right? This, this bugs me out all the time. How cool would it be if we go out and grab a five acre, put our own infrastructure and our own subdivision in there and start to name our own blocks? How cool would it be to have a, a, a 19 Keys Boulevard? Uh-huh. How cool would it be to have a EYL Lane? Let's go. How cool would it be to have an Acre Boy Avenue? Let's go. Like those are the opportunities that's right in front of us. So what we did is we created our program. 
In our program, what we have done is we've made a fully comprehensible program which takes everyone from A to Z in order to understand how to get an actual land done. We have something really, really interesting inside of our program, and that is called deal funding. For all my business people out there, that is what you call JV agreements, which means joint venture. So let's just say you found an undervalued piece of land for $50,000. You didn't have the money to actually do it, or you didn't want to put the actual money up, and it's worth $100,000. We would go ahead and put the money up for you. We would put the $50,000 up. Once it's sold at that $100,000 denomination, you would get $25,000 and we would get $25,000, giving you an infinite return because you didn't put any money up. Infinite. No money out of pocket, no risk. Let's you go. don't assume any risk. I don't know where it's going to get sweeter than that. But in closing, I'm looking at the clock. That's our time with people. We actually love coming out here, telling you a little bit about the land space. We hope to see many more, more of us investing in the land space. We hope to see you on this side yes, yes. with us. And before we get out of here, we want to leave y'all with some of our taglines and with hopes that these taglines stick, stick with you and inspire you to come on and do some land investing. And that first tagline is, invest in dirt, it's a clean way to make money. Uh -huh. The next one is, the new religion is to have acre ambitions. There's no more 40 acres in a mule, it's 40 acres in a school. We'll show you how to get the 40 acres, but you got to come to class first. Peace and love, y'all. Thank you. Before we get out of here, we absolutely have the pleasure uh -huh. to introduce the man of the hour who you all came Big to bro. see. Big bro. So I need y'all to do me a favor before we get to that point, right? It's something special that's going on. Can you grab that right there, Jay? Before we do this, before we introduce him, um, Today is a very special day, not just for oh, 19 Keys. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Today is a very special uh, day for video, myself right? as well. Well, they doing it's a video first, right? Let me tell you an interesting point about the Acre Boys and 19 Keys. 19 Keys name is Jabril. My partner name is Jabril. Yes, sir. 19 Keys birthday is today. Today, my birthday is today. So we celebrate. How ironic is that? Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what we wanted to do, what we went, went on and did for our good brother, being that we are the Acre Boys and uh -huh. we run across a lot of land, we went on and we gifted, or we're going to uh -huh. gift 19 keys. Our Hold brother. that up, Jay. Hold that up. His own personal two, two acres, acres of land from the Acre Boys. Uh -huh. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we get out of here, just please do me a favor. Can everybody get on their feet before we introduce him, before we bring him out here, please? Yes, yes. Before we hit the stage, the man of the hour, Mr. 19 Keys, would be out here. We're going to play this video. Yo, keep the energy going. You already know how he give it up. He'll be out here right after this video. So we love y'all. Peace and blessings. Big bro. Now listen, a little housekeeping. We have Sports Moss. Sports Moss is what I've been using to get big. Now, I know some of y'all been seeing me and y'all been asking me if I'm gonna play the next Black Adam, right? Y'all wanna know if I'm going to get into wrestling or into boxing or I'm gonna start bodybuilding and all those things. Now, the answer is no, right? I'm developing these broad shoulders and arms and legs because I can, right? I wanted to develop myself into the greater version, but I couldn't do it without the Sports Moss. Two of these a day, and it increases adenosine triphosphate, which helps deliver that oxygen to my blood while I'm working out, right? And then it helps decrease recovery time. So in this, it says we got the elderberry in there. We got the vitamin D, the sea moss, the zinc, and the cordyceps. Now, that conversation, how you tapped in. This is the super saiyan, you understand me, pill right here. Yeah. Then we got the vitamin C moss. We have uh, smart moss. So each one does something different. Y'all know we don't be getting enough sun, so you got to get that vitamin D in you anyway to regulate the hormones. You got to get that vitamin C because we don't naturally produce ascorbic acid. So you got to get it through food or some sort of supplementation in order for you to be balanced. You got to get that green tea extract in there, help build up that immune system. Now we got shrooms, but not the shrooms that give you the psychedelic experience, right? 
but it is the shrooms that help you increase your psychic abilities, meaning your mind, meaning your brain, right? As we age and we develop, we get old, decrepit, can't remember things, start to lose things. So we got to tap in, especially in a world that's constantly making us mentally exhausted. Then, of course, we got the goal. Now, y'all already know the goal, man, a goal to have us tapped into our electrical wiring systems, to your brain synapses is firing just like you was a baby. You're constantly developing, regrowing, and reflowing, right? So if you want to tap into those energy systems of mineralizations that I use to tap into my body, rather than being infused with the chemicalizations to where you no longer got body, y'all come tap into the gold water pills, man. Now we get to know each other. I know you feel the change. I represent it. And you can too. But only if you know your true self. And only if you live at your highest level. Are we low level or high level? No. Are we low level or high level? No. Whose time is it? No. Whose time is it? No. Are we back outside? No. Yeah. You know how hard they tried to stop us from getting right here? You know how many of us had to die? You know how many of us done taught, done bled, done stood on these stages, done marched, done got beat down, done been hanged, done been lynched? We done fought for the right to read, to give knowledge to our people, to resurrect the dead. But we here. I'm going to tell you something about this brown sea of beautiful melanin I'm a, that I see right here. There's a couple white folks in here. Shout out to y'all. But we got a powerful technology. It's something about the chemistry of who we are. See, ancient Kemet or chemistry comes from the word Kim, right? Which comes from ancient Kemet or the land of the blacks. Now, the land of the blacks was talking about the most fertile soil that they had. That which can be used for transmutation and alchemy. See, we have took every instance of our pain, every aspect of our trauma, and we've turned that into a power. See, what they thought they was bearing us and they thought they was destroying us, they was actually making us better. They didn't know that they were increasing our power because we have the ability to transform darkness and light. See, I came not to be like my ancestors, but to be better. I looked at the strategies that had been employed and I started studying. Because for a long time, all we've had was tactics. We've tried so hard to figure out how do we get from this place of complacency to take our thrones once again. And what I realized is that we need more generals. I'm not here to make more followers. We are now in a time where we need more leaders. But in order to qualify yourself as a leader, you need a philosophy. You can't just be reacting to the moment in the battle of what's happening on a daily basis. You got to take a step back and look at the field. We hear AI technology, we get scared. I ain't scared of nothing. God gave us dominion over all things. That means technology too. When we limit ourselves by our fear, then we don't conquer the circumference of our surroundings. But we've been stuck because our body has been informing us that we are in danger. There's something called the vagus nerve. Anybody familiar with that? Most people in here probably didn't been through some trauma. See, the reason why it's hard for us to get to this place where we can take advantage of where we're at right now is because we have so much in front of us, so many obstacles. Before we can ever talk about money, we gotta talk about the social political issues, the mental trauma, the death, the diabetes, 
right? Then we got to talk about the internal beasts and conflicts that's within the community. One person rises, one want to snatch him down. We think that black brilliance is somehow connected to the Illuminati. Anytime one of us make it, we say that must be orchestrated by the devil. That means you believe in the devil more than you believe in God. I used to have this running joke I used to say. You see a white man standing next to me, he sold his soul to keys. <laughs> Not the other way around. But what I was doing was reversing the mentality that we are the inferior. Anytime we stand next to something, you have to understand, everybody put their lights on their camera. Mr. Farrakhan has something that he said. When you look at the sun, right, I keep that sun, moon, and stars on me to represent that cosmic existence. But there's the sun, but the sunlight only reaches so much of the universe. The other stars, they are supposed to light the places where darkness is still at. You're supposed to go to the hood. You're supposed to reach the people that 19 keys ain't touching. You're supposed to be the example for your family on how to build wealth, how to build prosperity. And you can't just do it by talking. You have to do it through the actions of leading. See, when we do it through the actions, we're not mad but keys. I've been trying to get them on, but you ain't on. You got to eat, and then they get so inspired by what you're doing, it takes something inside of them, and then they start mirroring your actions. See, I've been learning strategy this whole time. They say, man, how you get in those rooms? I strategized. Those rules ain't hard to get in. But we think that it's impossible, that the gatekeepers got the control. No, see, there's a whole universe out here. They can control all the gates because we can build our own. We take media as a tool and a medium, and we say we can create high-level conversations because most of them are distracting. Most of them are gossip. They talking about eating ass every day now. How low have we gotten as a culture where we take our biggest mediums of media, but the reason why is because black voices are controlled by ad dollars. Most of it is your fault. How many people here got a business? How many of you all have directly invested into black media? See, black media controls the narrative. Marcus Garvey had his own newspaper. Honorable Elijah Muhammad had his own newspaper, Malcolm X, Minister Farrakhan, Frederick Douglass. Why? Because they understood if they didn't control the media, then it would be people like Sigmund Freud who was teaching his nephew, Edward Bernay, PR on how to control the mind. So they got you buying things that you don't need in order to aspire to be in connection with them. See. When you understand psychology and you get deep into the shadow collective of who we are and the shadow self of who we are, I realize the greatest enemy is not racism. It's not bigotry, right? It's none of those things. It's yourself. How do we live in a time where we have the greatest access to wealth, where luxury has been democratized? You can call up a car instantly. You can order up food instantly. Those used to be preserved for the rich where they had drivers or they had a personal chef. Now we got AI where you can have your own personalized doctor. Now you can have a personalized tutor. Now you can have somebody edit your content in five minutes to where you can decrease the amount of people that you need. That to me means that there's a transfer of wealth but when you're operating off the past, which is the trauma, you believe that there's lack when there is none. So I say, how am I still teaching all these people but they're not taking action? It's because the trauma is in front of them. And that trauma means that, okay, I need to do something to distract my mind because this is too hard. We don't embrace the pain. But some of us need pain to wake up our system to shock us into action. When you start to realize your God-given potential and power, you believe that nothing is a great resource to have. They said that, Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Minister of Farrakhan said that the universe is created out of nothingness. And when God made the universe out of nothing, he destroyed the impossible. But see, all of us are our mind. And we love nothing because the mind is nothing. It's no thing. It's not a substance. Yet yeah, we're created to tap in to the universal knowledge and perspective and spectrum all throughout the universe. We can take thoughts, conjure them up in our head, and we can bring them into reality if fear doesn't jump inside us. 
We have a destruction of men. We have a destruction of women. We are now in the age of the boy man and the girl woman. See, the lost generation of fathers, the lack of fathering in our community has destroyed that willfulness, that emotional resilience, that grit that we're supposed to have to step outside and face the challenges. Instead, you resort backwards. You step into your playful side. I just want to play a game, smoke, drink, distract myself a little bit. This is a psychology that most people don't realize they have an issue with. You've been mothered so much that you don't want to be a man. You want to rely on your parents to help you out. That's why I came up with the terminology man age. So that you can learn how to manage yourself. You got an idea. Oh, that's too much work. Enemy too big, too powerful. Quit making them your God then. See, I stepped into my power a long time ago. My parents told me I was a God, and I've been working ever since to prove that truth. I've been taking thoughts outside my head and bringing them into reality. I said, we're going to show up to the Apollo. This ain't for me. It's to show the rest of the guys we ain't got to be niggas in order to rise into position. We can travel around the world as thought leaders and teach. We can mobilize our people and give them the keys to unlock their reality. We no longer have to look at the drug dealer as the archetype. They ain't even getting no money no more. I'm just being honest. The streets is dead. Niggas are snitching every day now. The streets is dead. It's God's time. What's a nigga to a soldier anyway? He don't even know how to follow orders, and he damn sure ain't going to be no general. See, we done took the intellectual powers and power that we had, all that nice brain power, all that energy in the mind, and we've used it to degrade and destroy each other. We used to try to fight against the systems of oppression. Now we are the systems of oppression against each other. We put it in the music to degrade each other, to create a culture that's low and vibrational. How can we tap into these higher states of frequencies of focus so that we can take these ideas, write them down, plan them out, visualize them, execute them into reality? So that every time I hear that you got you an idea, I know you're going to get it done. Now it's a, he might do it. See, we got a whole lot of slim goals with fat habits. Because everybody look at each other results. I want that. I bet you do. But are you going to go through the process of building yourself up in order to be able to get it? See, I look at technology. I look at that as our resource. I don't look at it as an evil. That means that we have connected these traumas that we have when we was younger because, you know, the way that your nervous system develops, it starts when you're in the uterus. And if you have bad relationships from that age of one through seven, that starts to form your opinion on life and who you are. You start to live in this state of nervousness that things are going to go wrong, so you start looking for danger at all angles. So now you're stuck in survival mode and you're more easier to control because if I give you an idea of the future, you can't think that far. So we need to keep you constantly distracted. And this is not just within our community. This was America, period. You have foreign affairs who are interested in the politics of America, so they must keep the people divided so they don't think about global perspectives and moves as one. All they got to do is keep the people fighting on small things. And now the other governments, they can rule with an iron fist because they have authoritarianism. They don't have to fake behind the guise of democracy because it ain't no democracy. See, we talk about reparations, but we have to be repaired within first. Because if I give everybody money, you're going to spend it on your habits. We got 1.7 trillion spending power. We brag about it all day like we ain't the biggest consumers. That means there's a dangerous thing that I'm doing right now. If I teach you about real estate, now you're not uh, um, the tenant of another courtship. So they don't want that because you're taking out their pockets. Your ignorance is a product. If we teach you how to build wealth and understand assets over liabilities, right, to where you buying gold and you accumulating land and you getting your crypto and your life insurance and you're setting up trust and your family dynamics is marking them off and you got skills in your family on how to do options and trade and understand how to read charts and signals, oh, that's dangerous. They're going to have to change the whole system. Why? Because these are our consumers. Y'all keep over here trying to get y'all to never eat fast food again. McDonald's don't like him. No. Crystals, they don't like White Castles. Boy, they hate that boy. Because what they going to do have to change the product. You see they trying to make these impossible burgers. 
like they healthy and stuff. But it's impossible for you to know what's in the burger. <laughs> See, they're trying to adapt to the consciousness because people are breaking out of those limiting beliefs. People are breaking out of the expansion or the environments that we grew up in. And we're starting to think different. And they say, wait a minute, the corporations have spent 100 years figuring out the neuroscience of the Negro. And all of a sudden, you want to change your chemical composition to think higher levels. No, see, lower levels, now we got your ego. We just had you put on some brands. Hey, you just like us now. We accept you in our places. Put on the Gucci and the Louis. That's cool. No, but what about now we have the ability to create our own? We were in our own. You know, I got some off-whites, you know. They told me it was my birthday. I could throw in the crystals. But everything else, you know, we made this. So look at what we got now. We can create our own media to where we control the messages in the mind of the people. We can create our own clothes where we can be inspired by the things that we do, and that becomes aspirational. We can build our own businesses and our own products. We can teach each other about stocks, not only to invest in the stock market, but to invest in each other. See, I think about this a lot because we walk past each other and we think about each other's dreams and we never invest in them. Right? Your brother got a business. Oh, I've been watching you for a while. Stop watching and help. See, I'm glad all y'all showed up. Y'all not just watching, y'all helping. It's roughly 8 billion people on the planet Earth, but the high-level men and women of the society showed up today. Because y'all heeded the call. There's something inside you. There's somebody here that needed that message. They needed that roar. They needed that lion woken up inside them. So when they walk outside, they walking with pride. When they walk in that environment, they ain't afraid no more. Those problems that they had as a child, you got to go back in your mind and rescue that child that's been damaged. You got to go in the theater of your mind and go look to the negative past traumas on how you was treated and tell that child it's okay. Bring yourself back up because we are wrapped around the trauma that we went through. Masquerading. So we got this public side that we show the world. Public side, that's, that's what we want everybody to see about us. We fly, we cool, we step outside, we dapper, the personalities that we exude. Then we got the secret side of us that nobody knows about. That's the shadow self. It destroys all of our decision making because it always wants to hop out. It ain't about being perfect, it's about being whole. Right? Then we got the private side where we only show people that we know. Those are the people we give our loyalty to. And we're in this constant battle, in this fight between our public, our private, and our secret sides. See, black America has a secret side. Brown America has a secret side. White America has a secret side. So we are projecting this goodness, and this is who we want to be, but we see it come out in violence. Right? We see it come out in domestic violence and hate against each other. Oh, I want unity, but I hate that nigga, though. <laughs> this is not with him, though, but, like, but I want it with everybody else. See, I'm going to be honest, I don't want unity with everybody. I want unity with y'all. I want unity with people who have the same ethnic background. Race just means, you know what I'm saying? You, you got the same brown skin, that's cool, that's fine. But ethnicity, you share the same core values, missions. You share the same principles, faith and belief. Now we can move together. You're not in disagreement with the things that I'm doing. So I don't look for people who are of the same race. I look for people who are the same ethnic tribe. I need to not know how you look, but how you think. See, it takes four men to make an army. That's what I was taught. You need somebody who's a visionary, who creates the ideas, who's thinking for the tribe. Then you need somebody who's going to take action. I'm going to get stuff done. But you also need somebody who can organize and put it together the right way. Then you need somebody who can build relationships so that they can foster the connections that you need in order to reach the heights that you want to possess. So when you're looking at your team, you have to build it around that culture. That's the secret. I got a brother I'm bring up in a second that's about to, we're going to sit down and have a high-level conversation. This is my monologue. We're about to get into a dialogue. When you all leave here, I want you to ask yourself right now, why did I come here? Ask yourself why. Every time you go in the room, because God is always in the why. He's in the understanding. Right? So as you came here, you came here for something that's inside you. When you want to test the soil, you got to put your hand in the dirt. You got to go beneath the surface. You got to check to see if the worms are jumping in the life. 
right? Because when you plant that seed, you're not planting it on the top. So when we show, bro, I show up like this, I look great, but I give you some knowledge it don't take, right? No, we have to now look deeper within ourselves and go into the shadow selves that nobody can see. We have to study who we are from a customizable level. Everybody know that they astrology types. Most people don't know. They personality type. You look into the stars, you're not looking inside yourself. Right? So you got to know if you're a thinking type, a logical type, a sensational type. You have to know if you're more extroverted or introverted, if you sense more on the outside or on the inside because it changes the way that you go about building. So when we talk about knowledge of self, it's from a biological and a chemical level as well. But you can't just be saying, I'm a Taurus. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, we in good company. You know, shout out to the Taurus in the building. But if I ask the average person what your Myers-Briggs type, you couldn't break it down, right? If I ask you what was your design type, you couldn't tell me. If I ask you what's the alignment of your mathematics, you couldn't tell me, right? People don't take allergy tests. We spend all these money on liabilities and we have a reverse mindset when it comes to wealth. We don't mind liabilities, but we question assets. The moment somebody, bro, I'm gonna teach you something, give you some game, you know what I'm saying? But this game will cost a little bit. Bro, no, knowledge supposed to be free. Since when? <laughs> Think about this. What point in time, knowledge wasn't even available to everybody ever. Most people couldn't get knowledge about military strategy. They kept that away from the public because they didn't know what people would do with it. For thousands and thousands and thousands of years, knowledge was hidden because they didn't want what is happening right now. The individual renaissance, the evolution of minds around the world, taking this information and executing. They can't stop that. So when we talk about knowledge is free, it's because when we think of free, we think of things that have no value. There's a lot of free stuff out here. We free, but we don't value our lives. We free, but the fear keeps us whispering about the truth. And then when somebody do, I'm gonna support you, you keep doing your thing, bro. I'm, I'm gonna just stay over here, but if you need me, as soon as the targets come out, everybody disappear. As soon as a little conflict come out, everybody disappears. As soon as a little scandal come out, everybody disappears. Like everybody ain't got secret selves. Like everybody ain't got shadow selves. And see, I don't like the hypocritical reality that we live in on a daily basis because they don't allow us to get to wholeness. If we can get the truth out there, if we can accept each other for who we are, now we can have a whole culture again instead of a whole culture. I ain't talking about heaven on earth like Bashir said. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my brother. He came out, did his thing. But the problem is, is that they've been manipulating the words and the feelings and the ideas of what these things mean for a long time. And if you look at the world, you have to ask yourself, will God love the world that's being built or would the devil love it? I'm going to be honest with you. The devil will love your behavior right now. Based on theological terms of what is described to be as the devil, do as thou wilt. Have no discipline, have no focus, have no integrity. Be shameless in everything that you do. See, I always tell people, you know, it's okay to feel shame, but don't be shamed. Shame is when you think you're evil, it rots the soul. You got to know when you're guilty of something, I did some wrong. So now you move forward to right your wrongs, right? And then we climb the ladders up to be in that level of enlightenment to where we can start actualizing. So when we step off the slave ship, we moving into ownership, then moving into rulership, and now we at the mothership. But I can go, and I told them I was going to be short, but now I'm up here feeling it. I got the rostrum. I ain't going to lie. I said, Brina, I'm feeling myself. It's the birthday. I was going to do the whole Martin Luther King. I was going to hit y'all with the Malcolm. But today was just about the, the feeling in the building. Uh, three hours ain't enough to get out of the game, to be honest with you. We need days and days and days. Maybe years to spend with some of y'all. We need a little psychotherapy going on. But if we create new culture, we create new values, we create new systems, we give ourselves new options. So when we think about thriving and we think about taking things from the highest level, now we can say, well, I want to go out. All right. Go to Keys event, go to Yaki event, go to the EYL event then. It ain't got to just be a concert with somebody telling us we ain't shit because we ain't got enough money as them. 
we ain't got to just be trauma binding over R&B music. I'm just being a honey because everybody with a podcast and a trauma telling you something, you like, I relate to that. That Latin word, relatio, that's when we build relationships and connections to things. And now we can't disconnect from them. So now, oh, you went through that too? Well, let's talk about it. No, who is that person that healed through the process? Talk to them. Can we get the chairs out here? So this brother that uh, is going to sit down, he's one of the most brilliant minds that I've had the pleasure of sitting down and being interviewed with because I sat on his platform maybe about five, six years ago, and the questions that he asked was really like soul probing, and it allowed me to answer the questions in a way to where it was predictive. I can go back to that interview today, and I can see where I brought everything out into reality that I said that I would. Me and him, we had a little tit for tat back and forth, but he don't know it. That's how I do with my brothers. If I'm harsh with you and I don't mind telling you something and I don't mind conflict, which is because I love you. See, them soft-ass people, I can't tell nothing because I know they can't take it. But when it comes to the gods, hey, I'm on your helmet top. But this brother, man, I've been respecting this platform for a long time. And without further ado, I want to bring our brother Rich to the stage. Let me get the podium away. People focus a lot on nutrition, body-wise. You know, I'm gonna feed this particular system of the body, I'm gonna feed that system. Very rarely do people speak about the mind. Very rarely do speak, people speak about the brain. The brain needs the most energy, right? The brain is uh, needed to process. The brain is needed to, you know, compartmentalize. The brain is needed for so many things, you know, but we don't know what brain food looks like, you know? We know that the body's electrical, and what I understand about gold is not only is it super conductive, but it's non-corrosive and it's a noble element. So they say that if I am what I eat, I want to be noble. You know what I'm saying? I want to be of the highest degree. And I also want to focus on mental health. I want to focus on gut health. I want to focus on energy. I want to focus on youth. I want to focus on, uh, you know, accessing uh, pineal activity, hormonal balance. Everything the goal represents is what I want to see more of. So what better thing to do but align myself with this particular product and get it out to as many people as I can by singing the praise of gold, which is something that our people have been doing for over 10,000 years. Right? And there are many things that are happening that we have yet to uncover, that we have yet to know about, right? And I want people to comment what your questions are. I want you to comment what you think is going on in the world. I want you to comment what you think is the truth, right? And I will be answering some of those questions in video on 19keys.tv. So make sure you go subscribe, especially on the audio side, because we're going to be dropping bonus clips and things of that nature that you may not hear here at all. So you have to make sure you are a subscriber on the audio side to get some of that bonus audio. Now we all right, all right. Apollo in the house, all right. Keys, it's a pleasure being here, my brother. Man, pleasure to be here, brother. You've done so much in such a short amount of time that you have blessed us with your presence. And um, a person, you give us so much advice. And you tell us a lot of things about what we need to do to accomplish certain things. Mm -hmm. A person will look at you and they will want to emulate you. Your self-discipline, your perseverance, your persistence, your dedication, your love, your passion, all of that. But they may fall short of what they're trying to accomplish. And they may ask themselves, damn, why I'm not accomplishing what 19 Keys is accomplishing? So they'll talk to a spiritual guru. The spiritual guru will tell them, well, you're not doing this and you're not doing that. And they'll tell the spiritual guru, yeah, okay, all right, you got it. But in their mind, they say, I am doing that. I am doing this. So with that being said, my brother, is it sometimes just plain old destiny mm. that's taking place? And maybe some things are destined for certain people. Some things are not destined for certain people. And what we call the law of attraction is simply entertainment for us while we're down here in this mm. human experience. That's a good question. 
Destiny to me is an interesting idea. But I believe that people can make their own destiny, like I make my own. You know, growing up in St. Louis and Oakland, California, those are very dangerous environments. People will tell you that you're destined to die at an early age, right? You go through adverse childhood experiences. But I realized that most of the things that I went through that other people went through, the difference was I had a great attitude about it, right? I learned to transmute trauma to make it good trauma. See, some people go through things and it destroys them and they become emotionally numb and they try to cope instead of processing with it. Mm. A same person can go through the same thing and the way that they learn how to be seen and loved is by overachieving, mm. right? So that good trauma can make you an overachiever right. because now you want to be seen. Now you think this is the only way that people gonna know who I am. Mm. So I've been, I was traumatized about the stories I hear about black America. I was traumatized by my own household and relationships I'd seen between my mother and father. I was traumatized by seeing the, the baby daddy issues, baby mama issues. I just helped pay for a funeral the other day. I'm traumatized by that. So I need to overachieve so that I don't fall into the statistic category. Okay. And I've learned to build up emotional resilience, right? Where most people don't have that. They get stuck in their feelings and you have to understand to stop looking at other people's results and look at their process. See, you may want to be great, but you don't want to go through the great process. That's the building of the habits. That's the time that y'all don't see. That's all the money that we spent. Those are the team projects. That's the 100,000 times team came to me with an issue and a problem. You understand me? And, and it can stress me out. But I said, okay, if you ask for the success, you ask for the problems because they come along with it. But the man that can persevere through it, they deserve it. I believe you only deserve what you work for. So anything I have, I don't, or anything I don't have, I don't deserve it yet. But when you take that sort of thought process and you become future oriented and you start to look for and project yourself on what's next. I was sitting down there and for the first time in a long time, I was able to see my next level, right? I ain't gonna lie, I've been trying for a while because where I got to right here, I've seen this since the last 10 years, right? So I've been trying to say, okay, what is, what is the next stage of keys at? And I finally seen he was fly as hell. You know what I'm saying? Man, his crown was crazy, right? But if you have that ability to project yourself in the future and then think about the education that you need, the knowledge that you need in order to execute, after that is getting off of your emotions. Because then the time that it takes from getting to where you are to where you want to be is your procrastination, your work ethic. So anytime I get to a place where I don't know what to do next, I educate myself. And anytime I have the knowledge and I don't do it, I know that I'm in my own way. So now I had to go deeper in self to say, what is stopping me? And what most people have to figure out is that your current emotions, right? That's not even the real you. That's your past emotions, things you haven't dealt with, right? right? So you have to ask yourself, why do I want it though? Because you may not really want it. To go from point A to point B is not hard, but to actually want to be at point B is different. Because most people think they want something because it looks good on somebody else. But that was for them. So we have to customize ourselves to figure out who we really are, and then we have to move from that place of having a vision. Mm -hmm. So you can't mimic somebody else's reality. That's not a strategy. Mm -hmm. You have to take a step back and develop a grand strategy and say, what's the root purpose of why I want to do things? Mm -hmm. What is the best way I'm going to go? Well, how can I become risk adverse? When problems pop up, how am I going to solve that? Mm -hmm. I play chess in my mind. I'm a general for the daily battles because there's thought wars and there's self wars. Mm -hmm. And so when a person is going against themselves, a lot of time it's that child that's telling them, right, that was abandoned by the parent, right? A lot of times it's that when a person was told they wasn't nothing that's keeping them back. You don't really want it. You don't even deserve it. So we self-sabotage and self-destruct instead of moving forward. So you got to take a step back and reevaluate yourself and stop asking the spiritual guru. Spend some time alone. Settle with your thoughts and fast for a minute to figure out what your real habits and who you really are. And from there, that's what I've been doing my whole life. Excellent. You know, uh, here, give that man a round, round of applause. And definitely. Um, you talk a lot of, about being God, black God, uh, God energy, you know, God talk. You know, and those are some powerful words. When you say that, on a surface level, People believe it. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm God. I'm, I'm, you know, Elijah Muhammad, Farrakhan. Yeah, I'm God. But then that little voice creeps in. That little voice in the head. It says, 
Nigga, you can't even afford to take your girl to Whole Foods and get some organic berries. Mm -hmm. You can't get watermelon with seeds. You not God. You not God until you do that. Mm. What I want to ask you, since we have this voice in our head, when things ain't going right for us, I mean, you, they hear you, the God talk, but then the voice says, how are you God if you can't do this? My question to you is, brother, is God a behavior? Like, do I have to be doing well in life to be a God? Or is God my nature? Mm. Well, if I'm doing good or if I'm doing bad, I'm still a God. The devil is a God. Talk to him. He's a God over certain domains. Look at the world. He runs this world. God has always, always taught his power and force. Mm -hmm. Our mind wants to make sanity out of the things that we think about. Mm -hmm. Right? So, you know, this is why our brains... Anytime that, uh, I think it's called the reticular something Activating system. Activating system. Activating right. system, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you hear your name out of a voice of crowds, it's filtering those yeah. things that you're connected to, mm -hmm. right? So we don't realize that our success and failure is the same thing, mm -hmm. right? That magnetism and the law of attraction doesn't stop for the things that you want, right? It does whatever you do, whatever you think about. So if you say... You know, I'm tired of being broke. Now you're manifesting and producing more of that. Now that reticular activated system is looking for more reasons to stay broke, to validate that system. Our brain just wants to survive. Our bodies want to survive. We're not really built for wealth and thriving. 80% of our thoughts are negative. Because think about this. If, you know, that vagus nerve system says that if I'm in the woods and I see a lion, it's going to send signals throughout my whole body telling me fright or flight. Stand still, don't move. That lion can walk away. You still scared to move because you don't know if he's there. So you're not going to be able to get rest, calm, and safety and relaxation until you're completely uh, uh, feel secure that that lion is gone. But what if the lion just come back a couple, 10 minutes later, he just look at you, he don't want nothing. You're still afraid. Your body is sending signals throughout your whole body, right, telling you don't go nowhere because you're still in danger, right? So for me, when you think about the system of the body, it's so powerful and it's a, such a great design that we have to go against ourselves sometimes and we have to reprogram ourselves from a deeper level than our conscious level, right? Because we may want it from our public self to say, I want these things because the rest of the public got it. But you might not believe you deserve it. And your subconscious know you believe that, right? So he's not going to give you something you're not ready for. So for me, I always thought about God as saying that, okay, we're so powerful that even when other people tell you you're not a God, that's them playing God. How are you to tell me that I'm not a God? Only God should be able to do that, right? right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. think about it from this perspective. Like, if, if I can take a thought out my mind, literally, I, okay, I want to be at the Apollo. It's going to be sold out, right? An animal can't do that. But a man can because man is his mind. But mind is not a physical substance. We're immaterial. When we start thinking of ourselves as material beings, we're losing our power, right? When we think of ourselves as being connected to the infinite, right? We can't even live the fullness of our potential in these short amount of lives because we're biological creatures. We need our finite bodies. We can live immortal through our actions, our deeds, the things that are carried on that people remember that impacts us through our names and that frequency of our spirit staying alive. So there's a lot of people who don't believe that they're God, they're subduing the God within. I ain't say you created the heavens and the stars, but I'm saying you have the willpower. Just like that that you say you a part of, if I'm my father's son, then I have the capabilities of my father. But I can never be my father. So whether you think you God or whether you think you not, that's just the God in you. Telling you and creating your reality for you. But once you realize it and you say you are, right, and you say that I am, Right, I am is saying that, no, I'm the great potential. And anything I say after that, I can activate. We are pools of potential waiting for activation. So when I see people that are stuck in that low mode of saying, I can't do that, you can't do it because that's what your God is telling you. When you say you can do it, you can do it because that's what that God is allowing you to do. So you can either create the cage for yourself or you can free yourself. I decided to say that, no, being a God is not about my ego. Right? Being a God is about 
being able to take the self-power that we have, the self-knowledge that we have, and take the thoughts that is inside of us and enjoy life by bringing them into reality. So women have the ability to procreate through a physical construction to prove that they God. Man has to do it through a mental construction to prove that we gods. You know, I'm, I'm glad, yeah, definitely. I'm glad you brought that up. My brother, you do a great job of dealing with you know, uh, masculinity, the divine masculine, you know, where being attacked, constant attack of estrogen, whether it's through the foods or through the plastics or uh, just through, through the weed, as uh, Dr. Wesley Muhammad taught us, we're constantly attacked. So you do a great job about promoting masculinity. My question to you is, you bring up the infinite, you bring up God, you bring up the great potential. The great quantum speakers out there talk about this as being the divine feminine. Mm. There's a book called Feeling is a Secret by Neville Garden, mm -hmm. where he says, your feeling is what takes things from the quantum world and brings it into this world. Now, feeling is a, is a feminine energy. Mm. Does it ever feel weird to you promoting to the world about divine masculine, but using the divine feminine in order to manifest what you want into this life? Very powerful question. Duality, yes. everything in the world has duality and it has polarity, mm -hmm. right? Now, I don't know, I know people talk about eons ago, women was able to have their own babies, but I don't know no women Part here that can have their own babies. I think, I think they, they call it that, yeah. Yeah, that's nice and everything. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I live in reality, right? Yes, sir. We are the great opposites yeah. that attract, attract each other. Yes. The woman is a God, man is a God, Yes. right? Together, we create more gods. When man and woman get together, it's the only equation where one plus one equals three, not two. Right? We change the physical laws of mathematics when we come together. Man by himself being that sperm that swims to that egg and being sparked, and then that egg is now being produced inside the woman, that's not something she does by herself. That is the partnership. That's the divine alignment to make sure that we have the necessity of reliance on each other. So when we create systems that only speak towards the power of one, because when we say that God is man, man means mind, mm -hmm. right? When we think about the mind, who can show me where the physical reality of the mind exists? People can't really make sense of reality, mm -hmm. right? The woman is the, the divine essence of the universe, but we both have feminine and masculine within us, mm -hmm. right? When we utilizing the uterus of the mind, Right? We're giving birth to thoughts. Like right? You are able to, you know, that's why I always say procrastination is the abortion clinic of ideas. Yeah, yeah. No, right? No, because no, no, no. when you're producing a precept, mm -hmm. it spins in the mind the same way a baby is being spinned in darkness. Mm -hmm. Right? We're being prepared for a next reality. We're showing that the woman is made for a particular purpose and man is made for a particular purpose. She is made for the divine instruments of intuition, mm -hmm. right? You are more of a seat house of logic, mm -hmm. right? So you are thinking things from a high level viewpoint. The woman doesn't need to be the man unless the man is no longer being the man. Mm -hmm. So now she's masquerading herself because he's masquerading as her, mm -hmm. right? And so when you see that man and that woman come together, Right, and in the beginning, there was man and woman working side by side to produce reality, but a lot of these things that we take as concepts, we're thinking of them on a physical plane instead of an immaterial plane. So feminine doesn't mean woman. Masculine doesn't mean man. These are typical traits of a man, typical traits of a woman, right? But these are traits that we both have. So why not unlock that which is in you that is your ultimate power? Why try to be like the man when you can be the woman? And I think it's a destructive thought process when the woman doesn't appreciate the feminine power. Because this world is all about, listen, I'm, I'm, even women, when they get into it, I got big balls. Get off my D, right? <laughs> Nothing is surrounded about the power of the womb, right? Nothing is. When they get power, they attribute it to the man's power. They don't attribute it to the woman's power. It plays to the ego to talk about a woman being God because women are narcissistic as well. But we don't talk about that concept. Everybody is narcissistic on a certain spectrum. 
because we're self-absorbing and self-preserving, right? The ego is all about survival. It's about I. I got to get past this. If everybody running from the lion, I got to run faster, right? So when we stuck in this survival mode, we start to create these gender wars. These small conflicts are stopping us from being together, from actually playing God. We play God when we come together, right? Not while we apart. I want to talk to you um, real quick about the black man and leadership, mm. his leadership in his household and in his life. We are taught that, you know, the black man is supposed to be the head of the household. Mm -hmm. We are taught that the woman is supposed to submit to the black man. Mm. So the black man gets in this position where the woman is submit to him. He's the head of the household. Sometimes he forgets because he's so used to that position of being the king of the jungle. He forgets that he's supposed to submit to God. Mm. He forgets that even though he's the king of the jungle, he's still a drop in the ocean of divinity. Mm. So does that, in your opinion, the man's lack of, because he's so used to being the king of the household, does that lead to his failure in leadership because he ultimately cannot submit to his higher self or to that God energy? Mm. See, if I brought Brother Rich, man. I think the man is trying to survive. Yeah. When we talk about that, that boy man, he is afraid to take position, truly. This is why men want to do 50-50 with their woman. Ooh. Right? Oh, don't get them started, Keys. Don't get them started. I see them now. Don't get them started, Keys. Listen, Whoa. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of women today, they have husbands, but they don't have a man. Yeah. There's a lot of women today. Or oh, that's why I said, yeah, women. There's a lot of men today. You got a wife, but you ain't got a woman. Right? So we like to deconstruct everything these days. But we're not good constructors. We like to just destroy things. But can we put something better in place? Our ancestors was figuring out how do we work together? How do we figure out harmony and, rim, uh, and rhythm? Because everything in life is cycles. Right? See... You know, when a woman goes through birth, she goes through postpartum depression right afterwards sometimes. A man goes through it as well six months later, right? Or most of the time, sometimes six months later, but it's never seen as that way. See, we are, we are equal, but in different aspects, right? But we don't think of it like that. So it's not that we are inferior to each other, but we're not appreciating the differences of each other. See... Man has the ability, like you said, he has to submit to God. That's him submitting to his higher self. Today, it's a struggle. And this is why I talked about the shadow self, because that shadow self is always lurking, right? It's always behind that which we're trying to become versus that which we are, that which we don't want to be, right? But it's still us, and we have to figure out a way to integrate within that. So submitting to God is saying you can't do just anything that you want to do. So that's the battle and the war within. But society is telling us you can do whatever you want to do, right? But at the same time, when we have been denatured, right, and we're not activating ourselves within a rhythm of who we are, right? We're not getting that feminine from our woman. We're not getting, you're not getting that masculine from your man. So you look for it outside the household, right? When a man submits to God, he is submitting to something higher than himself in a vision. So as long as he is fighting to submit to that vision on a daily basis, then she can say, I believe in you. Right? Mr. Farrakhan said a man don't need a woman if he don't have a vision. You ain't got no work. What you need a woman for? You know what I'm saying? She submits to what he does, not who he says he is. So when we have that ability, and this is why God is so important in this conversation as we talk about wealth, Right. And we talk about the future of our society because a lot of men, like I said, don't want to be men. So they damn sure don't want to get to that point of hierarchy to where we're not surviving no more. We're in the safest time to be alive in reality where we don't have to think about surviving. We can start thriving. We can start building cities. We can start engineering our own media and schools and farms. We can start architecting reality. She's wondering why you ain't doing none of that. It ain't just about submitting to God and bowing down and being safe in your presence. Right. When do you go architect something? Right. When do you go do something so big that I don't even believe it at first, but I'm going to help you get there, baby? Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, Keys. Okay, Keys. Okay, I see where you're going with this. You I feel me? Going with this. You feel me? I see where you're going with this, my we brother. We need bigger visions. I see where you're going with this. Let me ask you this, then. Mm -hmm. What comes first? Your mission or your family? And the reason why I ask that is because some men who put their mission first, their family suffers while the whole world celebrates them. Mm. Ooh, that's a good one. I would say this. My first thought is to say mission. But it depends on what your mission is. Your mission should be connected to your family. Explain that one. Explain that one. When I first started business and I had a job, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, naturally, everybody wants their family to support their business. Yes, sir. But does your business support your family? Right? See, I named the four different things that you need, right? You need an organizer, you need somebody that builds relationship, you need an idea creator, you need somebody that take action. When you have those things, you got a team. That team is your army that can go out there and fight whatever war that you want. In a family, if we look at the way other populations do it, you know, our brown people, shout out to my brown people in the building. All y'all brown, to be honest. You know, we got the Asians and things of that nature, and you got the Jewish people, you got the Amish. I've studied all their different wealth systems, and it always revolves around family. The problem is, is when your family sometimes don't support your mission, too. Right? You should not have to go out your way, right, to come back to your family. They should be along the journey with you. They should be supporting you. They should be interested in the ideas of how you're taking over the world. But we've become so individual and so egocentric. You don't want to hear about the mission when you get into the household, right? Because you don't understand it. You think you're completely separated from it. Hey, no, leave that at home. No, the mission got to come back home. We at war, right? So when we're talking about the wars that we have on a daily basis, we're not at this level of luxury to where we can separate the mission and the family. You can't just go home and be like, all right, I'm done with the mission. Just, it's separated. just chill time. No, your son needs to be there to inherit the mission. Your wife need to be there because the, Mr. Farrakhan said her home is not her place, that's her base. Those are operations, right? They have to be rites and rituals and passages that we have that we working together. And at the same time, you can't just be out there for the world, right? And then your family is suffering because pops ain't had no money, right? And all they were here, it was debt issues, traumas, and problems. But you said you was for the world. That's a survival mechanism sometimes where you see in a relationship of abandonment and you're afraid of those relationships and you detach from that. And so you put all your stock and energy in the mission that makes you feel good, right? But instead you say, no, nah, I'm going to teach my son about this. You heard Hannibal Barker? Yes. So his father from an early age taught him war strategy, right? And when he got of age around 23, he carried on his father's mission and then around like 30 something, he became the greatest general of all time. The only one they were able to go against Rome, right? See, when you add your children into the mission, they become the mission as well. Our children are an extension of us. So if you are following God and you embed what God tells you to do, you are embedding God in their actions and their will as well. But we are at this point where we don't have generational wealth. We don't have generational missions to where, you know, George Bush, he fought his father's war when he invaded Iraq. He finished what his father started. Prescott Bush. Right. How many of us, you see, you see LeBron James, his son is going into the same mission, right? How many of us are rearing our children because inside the DNA, they have the information of what we did. But we have to put something inside ourselves to where once you're giving your child that mission, you're just teaching them about themselves because they already have the skill sets to complete the mission. So you can't really separate the mission and the family because especially today, family has to be the number one mission. Look at all of the richest, most powerful people on the planet Earth. These are family last names. They got crests, they got logos, they got a mission, they got a value. This is what our family does, right? And so now, like I said, when we make family the mission because the agenda that's against the family is the deconstruction. Right, of us being together because we understand that those are the greatest generals on the planet Earth coming together. When we were together, we were doing debutante bars. We was fighting through all these wars together. He came back out there from the trenches. She healed him up. He got back in the ring and kept on fighting. But now he get back home and they arguing. Where you been, nigga? 
Whoa. So we don't know how to deal with each other anymore. So that's why a man has to figure out his mission becomes his escapism. Now he gets to escape. This is the only time I get to leave the house because you come back to trauma. You come back to issues. You come back to being misunderstood. So we don't study and observe each other no more. Right? But when we study each other, we know each other. We ain't got to ask the question. We already know what you need. Right? So if you have a man that's on a mission, you have to help him complete that mission. And then he has to be able to tap into his divine self so that he is not robbing you of that emotional and spiritual support that you're going to need to be happy and relaxed to feel safe and secure. Speaking of family and mission, you know, women, when, when, they, go out there, when they go out there and they're looking for a man keys, they want a powerful brother. They want a brother who shows leadership skills, who shows strength, who shows courage, and they hope that those traits get passed down to the seed. So that seed could continue the mission like you said. But what's and it's, that sounds like a good formula, Keys. That sounds like an amazing formula. I'm a, the woman will say, I'm gonna get with a Malcolm X, or I'm gonna get with Elijah Muhammad, or I'm gonna get with this one, and my babies will continue the mission of this amazing man. I can pass this down through, uh, the woman says, through her womb. But Keys. When you look at the children, y'all know where I'm going with this, right? Of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. When you look at the children of Malcolm, uh, uh, Martin Luther King. When you look at the children of Malcolm X. When you look at the children of Dr. York. When you look at the children of Dr. Sabi. And I could go on and on from these great men. The children ain't living up to their the, the father's standards at all. Mm. What the hell happened, Keys? The children don't always have the same mission as the father. Sometimes that father, right, because here's the thing, and this is, this is a hard thing when it comes to great men and their children. Yes. Right? They fear living up to their father's footsteps, right? And it causes them to go into self-destruction or the opposite mode. Right? I don't even want nobody thinking I'm trying to live up to my father's footsteps. I want you to know I'm trying to be something different. So they rebelled against his mission completely. Okay, that's deep. The father is supposed to not make children like him. He's the most to make children better than him. If we're making a child better than him, then that means that he has to put pressure on them. Everybody can handle the pressure. Right? There's a few who's going to be able to handle it because the goal is... You have to have somebody who's able to take that mission and go further to see another route, to see innovation, not try to follow what they father did. I see what you did, Pops. Actually, I actually like that. I got a different way I'm going to go about doing it. I live in 2023. Sometimes we look for the children to follow the direct footsteps, but we just need them to add on to it to evolve the mission, right? You don't know whose children may do something to where it say, okay, Pop's got this handled, I'm gonna do the arts. Pop's got this handled, I'm gonna do the engineering. Pop's got this handled this way, I add on to it, I'm gonna do the fashion over here, right? Pop's got this handled, I'm gonna learn the psychology, I'm gonna introduce it through the technology, right? And so your children, if you shape them and give them purpose the right way, they will find out what their skill sets are, right? And the only way you can increase, not is by taking what's already in existence, no, you have to take something from nothing and then add it on to. That's how you get increase. So the child has to find out their own sometime, and then sometimes the child is the soldier. They take the thoughts and ideas, and they follow along with it. But you can't give a child a mission that may be connected to their weakness. So you have to study a child because when they come into fruition, we have customizable differences, right? They might not be a speaker. They might be introverted. They don't want to talk to the public but they may be the greatest cinematographer on the planet Earth. Deep. So you may be pushing them into a position that they weren't born for. So even your own children, just because they're your seeds, you can't be so egotistical to say that my seeds have to do this. No, sometimes your children are the people who get the message, right? And when you do that, then you find out that it's the spiritual children that you have are the ones who further the mission. And so when you what are you giving birth to children? things. What do you mean by spiritual children? Look at the honorable minister Farrakhan yeah. and the honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's his spiritual child. Okay. That didn't need to physically come from him, but you. he was impregnated with the spirit and the frequency of the mission. And that became who he was. That's so now example. he's activating and carrying that on. Look at Ishmael. That's actually the honorable Elijah Muhammad's son. He's following that mission. 
A hundred percent is never a thing, right? There's never a hundred percent exact. But when we do the work, we can't just look for the connection of people that come from us biologically. That's ego. Look for the people who's connected to the mission. That's spiritual, right? So it may not be my son. It may not be my brothers, right? But there's some soldiers in the audience. They may be the next greatest thought leader on the planet Earth. I have to expect that. And, and since you brought up the nation of Islam, I brought it up, and then you, um, you just yeah, made, you brought it up for sure. Yeah, yeah, I brought it up. Then you made me think about uh, their teachings. Um, you knowing keys, you knowing the story of Yaku. We're in 2023 <laughs> with the idea of artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. and you promoting artificial intelligence. I teach it. I teach don't promote it. it. Why would you teach it if you know that could potentially become Yakul 2.0? In 1995, we had the Million Man March. We have so many social issues in our society. We was trying to create atonement. So we had an oath that each person would take to be better, to uphold a certain standard in society. At the same time, Jeff Bezos' family was giving him hundreds of thousands of dollars so that he can take advantage of this new emerging technology, the internet, mm -hmm. right? Netscape was doing an IPO, right? If our parents would have bought red.com, black.com, they could have became millionaires and billionaires instantly. Mm -hmm. Then you would have had the minds of our people with a budget to do something with that money. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when we have ideas, they're not just wishes, they become reality. Mm -hmm. So when I see these new technologies that come about, Look at the people who are at the bottom. Advancements are the ones that, you know, when we have any new technological advancements, the people at the bottom could benefit the most, right? If they understand it and they use it. This is the way social media came about, right? Twitter, you know, black Twitter is what made Twitter popular, right? We start throwing the seasoning on it. We saw bait the hell out of Instagram and Twitter, right? We made it hot. But then what happened? We started using it as a tool for communication and media. They said the same thing about social media. They said the same thing about the internet. When you know yourself and you're not operating from the place of fear and lack, you see another tool as something under your dominion and control. So I try to keep it, I didn't teach, just start talking about AI. I start talking about it to warn us. You go back five years ago. I looked at the writings on the wall and I said, damn man. You know, AI, if you look at the numerical value, A equals one, the I is nine. So I find symbols, I find numerology and synchronicities, that's the 19. That 19 really represents that man and that woman, that's God. So I look at the artificial powers trying to maintain power. Artificial intelligence, artificial insemination, artificial ingredients. Those are the AI, but we have our ancestral intelligence, that's our AI, right? If we can utilize AI to solve the problems of our culture today, why not? If we can use blockchain to solve the problems of our culture, cryptocurrency to create our own currencies, decentralized uh, autonomous organizations to where we can create these voting instruments where the people have power. Why not pe teach the people the technology to use the tools of today? Old wars, new strategies, right? How can I, I can go door to door and I can canvas every neighborhood in Harlem or I can go on social media and take the wealthy tools that they've used and created like CNN, NBC, Fox News. I can put a message out there and we can reach 30 million people. When we talk about aggregate efficiency, I want to be able to get the maximum amount of energy based on the maximum amount of output. We've been putting out the same energy, but we haven't been getting a greater amount of output because we've been looking at the old models of our ancestors. I want to be like that. No, you have the design in the new because they wouldn't have done it like that if they had the tools and the technology and the resources that we have today. So. Most people don't want to send their they children to school with all these little weirdos. You might have to build a curriculum out utilizing artificial intelligence to customize it for your child so that you can customize it based on their psychological profile, right? When we look at the problems, we don't, we don't look at the, uh, the problems, we don't have any more excuses anymore, right? AI can be a tool for the devil or it can be a tool for God, depending on who uses it. The reason that we're afraid of AI is because we haven't been building. We're afraid of things because we know we're consumers. That's a fear-based mindset. I think from a producing mindset. The reason I want to teach us before it becomes a new wave 
is so that we can get ahead of it and control what happens from it next. So if we sit back and say, okay, what are some of the best use cases? They got spatial, they got VR. We want to be able to get rid of some of the trauma and the mental health issues that's faced within our community today. I sit in front of the AI and I ask the psychological questions, right? I ask AI for a dossier on me. That's what the CIA does when they come up with a profile. They was like, you definitely on the list of national interests. Wow. That would have told, I said, God damn. Wow. But I wanted to, you know, study myself from the standpoint of, can you use these tools for knowledge yourself? But at the same time, I don't, like I said, I'm not promoting, I'm teaching. Because we have to be aware of everything in order to have power over everything. But if we don't have awareness, it's controlling us and we don't know. Look at all these artificial things that's out here. Artificial ass, artificial lashes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we've already accepted an artificial reality. So I said that, would you take a chip in your mind? I'm not promoting the chip, but I understand where we at right now. Yeah. That we accept artificial things already. If they said the chip gonna make you smarter. Well shit, you got a brand new ass and new body just so you can make a couple more dollars. So you telling me you're not gonna put a chip inside your body in order to make you smarter so you can compete with everybody else? I don't believe it. So what I'm teaching us is to understand the new realities that's coming about so we can have mental tools so that we're not reacting from it. We're developing strategies now so that we can get in the landscape and we can win. But if we're fearful of it, you can't say you a God. Powerful. You're a master psychologist, my brother. Masterful with that. Let me ask you this, Keys. Do you ever feel like, as a, as a world thought leader, Mm. that you're a slave. Being a leader, now this is weird, as a leader, do you ever feel like a slave to the people who look up to you or the people that follow you, expectations of you, because they may perceive you a certain way, and then you turn around and go in the breakfast club, mm -hmm. and they like, you win the crown, you win, what you doing in the breakfast club? Mm. What are you doing on Drinks Champs? Mm. What are you doing on, what's Adam, what's his, No Jumper mm. podcast? So they may make you feel guilty. Mm. Now you confident, you like, well, damn, they, I feel bad now. The people who listen to me said I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. Mm. And then you become a slave to the expectation. Does that ever happen to you, my brother? Nah. <laughs> when I was on Drink Chaps, I was sipping on that gold water. You had the sage too, right? Yeah, the sage. I had the Palo, Palo Santo and yeah. everything. What is the mainstream? So we have pools of consciousness, mm -hmm. right? But we can't reach everybody because it doesn't go into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Everybody's afraid of the fluoride, the decalcification, the pineal gland. Why? Because it's in the mainstream, mm -hmm. right? When negative music becomes popular, it gets in the mainstream. So now mainstream consciousness is listening to it and intaking it. What happens when you go put something good, some minerals and some benefit in the mainstream? Mm -hmm. Now that's reaching the people as well. The question that people got to ask is, what am I putting in the mainstream? Mm -hmm. People be so afraid. Like I said, we really look at black success as a product of the devil, mm -hmm. right? So we don't, subconsciously, we don't want to be successful, right? Okay. So when I think about that, I remember having that interview with you all the years ago, but I always knew that this would be a thing. A lot of times we destroy the ones that can change the world before they get the opportunity to. We see Powerful. them along their journey. Powerful. So. You know, on Breakfast Club, I gave him food for thought. Yeah. On, 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 on Drink Chance, I gave him gold water. Mm. On No Jumpers, I was throwing shots. You know what I'm saying? After that, shit, No Jumper fell off. He ain't got No Jumper no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what I was trying to do is, when you understand marketing, you have to reach audiences that don't know who you are. That's shining the light on the dark areas. We stay in our little pools of consciousness and think we doing something because everybody else is telling us we that man. And when somebody do something that we can't do, we mad at them because we haven't gotten there. It's not that they mad at that I'm there, they mad that they not there. They say, how the hell he do it? It's this self-grandize. I didn't see brothers come up with these theory videos on me. That'd be funny, I ain't gonna lie. Hey, one brother, he was talking about 19 keys, got the Masonic towels with the one nine in the keys, and that represents the normal Masonics or some shit. And I'm like, man, you got all of that time to think about me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What about your son? Yeah. 
How much time have you spent in learning him? You know what I'm saying? Look at, getting on these shows ain't the hardest. You know, I'm a general, so I'm a strategist. I look at the, 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 the landscape and I study it. I'm going to give me a PR agent. I realized I was in these rooms mad for not getting no media, but I ain't had nobody to do my damn media. Right? I realize when I look at these organizations, we look at them as evil. What about everybody that's working for these organizations ain't evil? There's black people in there, brown people in there. I just had a conversation with Telemundo the other day. You know what I'm saying? Because there's good people in all these organizations. So a strategist is going to look and say, I need to connect to the good people around the world who get in there for the purpose of making change in the culture of these historical, systematic, oppressive places. So if I connect with you and you say, listen, you know, I'm here for diversity, ain't I? Well, I want to bring 19 keys on. I create a relationship with them. Now they bring me on. Everybody else looking like how you did that. I went and socialized and networked, right? We don't even develop the business skills. When we talk about being God, it ain't just saying, oh, my ego, I should have everything. You thinking you the prophet of the world? I might give a damn about that. No, how you will go out there and strategize, take that knowledge, execute, learn what everybody else is doing, the best practices, implement that, become innovative, and then execute and sell out the Apollo Theater. Yeah. Woo. Okay, okay, them, okay. Listen, shout out to them shows, but shit, on high level conversation, we had way more views than any interview I ever done. So you looking at yeah. that as power, I'm looking at when I did high level conversations and I collaborated with two other black men to come on their network and create something that ain't never been done. You all gotta learn the power of collaboration. You gotta learn how to build networks and relationships with people. We be so much into the spiritual, but we don't learn no goddamn business. We ain't studying no marketing, we ain't studying no branding, right? We don't know how to speak and communicate. We don't understand tonality. We don't understand none of these things and we think we can just wish things to happen into reality. I work every single goddamn day. So I wish a nigga would get in my face talking that bitch ass shit. Wow. 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 And you can tell them I said it, because I want the smoke. So, so, Keys, you know, celebrities play a major role in our culture as far as influencing the culture. I always wondered why Conscious Brothers, when they, powerful Conscious Brothers, when they seem to get around celebrities, they kind of get a little watered down. Mm. Their fire mm. kind of gets extinguished. Mm. And I'm saying to myself, if we're saying, if the people are saying the celebrities are lower frequency, how is the lower frequency lower in the higher frequency mm. instead of the higher frequency raising the lower frequency? Woo. So, the idea of selling your soul is not like the devil walk up to you, here, take my soul for a couple of dollars. <laughs> nah. It's the principles and the values that you have that you sacrifice for the things that you want. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, because I'd be everywhere, but I realized like that energy is powerful. When you go into these places, you can become impressed, become, right? Okay, that's what it is. When okay. you become impressed, it leaves an impression on you. It changes the integrity of who you are. Who you are is, you know, who you naturally are before, you know, anything gets a hold of you. Like a foundation stands on the integrity of its pillars. Right. But when you become impressed by things, you sacrifice part of your values and your system to stay a part of it. Now they can use that impression to control you. Oh, you like my money, don't you? You're impressed by this, huh? It's nice, huh? Come over here. Sit on my lap. You know what I'm saying? Well, I ain't impressed by none of them. I'm impressed by God. So I walk up in these rooms. You know, I, be, I, I done went to a party before I had some Palo Santo. You know what I'm saying? And they was wondering why because I got to keep the energy right. I got to let you know that I'm different. So when you see me in this environment, you straighten up. You know what I'm saying? I be meeting people that probably didn't say it. They probably ain't said peace God in their whole life. As soon as they sing peace, peace God, God, man, I peace love what God. you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to change the atmosphere as you go to places. So never be impressed by anything. That's how they control you. There's a society called the DEFCON 19 Society. The way that they make, you know, they, they basically they hackers. So they learn how to hack things. So what they would do is they would take a blank key, they'll put it in a keyhole, and then it creates like ridges in the key so they know how deep to cut. Because every key is really more general. That's why people can pick locks, because locksmith is not making them so customized and different. Mm -hmm. So they can easily go in there and they can make a key, right? And that's called creating an impression mode, mm -hmm. right? 
most people, if you study who they are, you can find out what they are and you can figure out how to make an impression on them to unlock their mind, to control them, right? And so I think about all these things while I walk in the room. So I'll be careful walking in my footsteps, you know what I'm saying? Because you may not be able to stop yourself from being impressed when you go into these rooms. You may be relating to things, creating connections and relationships to them. And those relationships start to control you. So I have a rule, never be impressed by anything. I don't care if you're a billionaire. I don't care you got a private jet. None of that matters to me. Because guess what? If I stand next to you, I'm still more impressive because I know myself. Okay. Confidence, confidence family, confidence. I wanna to talk to you about, um, there's an agenda that a lot of people are talking about within you know, the grassroots or the conscious circles and that agenda is the gay agenda. And you know, we feel like this agenda and it has nothing to do with a person's sexual preference. It's an agenda that the higher ups have. And we feel like they want to use this group of people to break up the, uh, what do you call it? The neutral family? What do you call that? The, um, um, the, the nuclear, nuclear family. Nuclear family. They feel like they want to break up the nuclear family by pushing this agenda. So what I've noticed is that a lot of blacks are siding with you would call them Trump supporters. You would call them patriots, American patriots. You would call them them hardcore wave, American wave flagging people that you see saying, I love America, God mm -hmm. bless America. And it's weird because these people are typically known as white supremacists. And then another group of people are typically known as pro-blacks. And they seem to have a, 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 an agreement at this time because in another agenda is coming in and they're causing them to side with each other. So we're taught we're voting, pick the lesser of two evils. Is that what we're seeing happening right now where black people are saying, okay, they're breaking up the nuclear family, I'm gonna stand by the wave flag in Americans because these people are the lesser of two evils? Is this what we're seeing right now? What we're seeing is people who have similar values agreeing with each other. Black people are really conservative. so. Truly, we've been fed the Democratic agenda, but we're more aligned with the conservative Republican values, right? So it seems disconnecting that when they talk about the nuclear family that we would be in agreement with them because historically both parties have been racist. But we side on those who are on our side, right? When we talk about an agenda, I know people say, he said gay agenda, right? Counsel them. But here's the thing, everybody has an agenda. They literally have a LGBT corporation. They have a president, right? Who's the black president? I ain't, don't say Obama. <laughs> Who's the brown president? 19 Keys. Chill. Don't try to, hey, listen. Don't put the spotlight on me. No, but what happens is, is that it's an agenda, it's a list of items, it's things you want to get done, right? And so they were smart enough to realize that they had to have a strategy in order to change traditional values and systems. The problem that most people have is that they're not actively against gay people, right? But the active agenda in the way that is being spread to us is interrupting our consciousness. Because when you're used to a world where you see nuclear family, you see man and woman, that's fine. It doesn't disrupt your sensibilities. But when you go watch Power and they got more gay scenes than they got hetero scenes, now you're like, God damn, 50? <laughs> right? So when you see DeSantos, right, in Florida creating these rules and laws, you will wish things go back to normal. Men are more traditional. Women are more progressive, right, especially in this day and order. And this is also why we have such a huge disconnect because women agree a lot more with the progressive establishment of things that's going on. So now it creates these battles, right? Because they say love is love. But who created that slogan? That came from Facebook, right? It was a social experiment. After they were voting for gay rights, right? What happened was is they wanted to see, they failed, first of all. Supreme Court then said that no, we're gonna implement it. So it was never a democratic thing. The people actually never agreed about it. Now this is important when you talk about psychology. 
So they said Facebook ran their first social experiment by allowing people to put the rainbow avatars right over their profile. Mm -hmm. And it worked. So you've seen rainbow flags everywhere. I remember, I remember that. Right? Yeah, I remember. And then later on, they said this was a social experiment. And connected to that was the slogans of love is love. Mm -hmm. When I hear certain slogans, love is love, what does that mean? It's just it's like saying black is black, orange is orange. Because now you don't have to have logic behind what we do anymore. So we're a society that can do things based off our feelings now, right? Early psychologists were studying as to how do we become a desire-based versus a need-based society, right? If you think about the things that we need, those are not at the forefront of what's marketed to us, what we talk about and what we think about on a daily basis. We are now being captured from the dark side of the collective shadow, right, of society, right? Our sexual desires, our innate things, that's what we're being fed on a daily basis. So when you talk about the family unit and we talk about, well, the black man been taking out the household, we don't know how to get along together. Well, it sounds like the solution of us to figure that out. But when we talk about these agendas, they're constantly being bombarded, bombarded at us every single day, right? And now it makes you fight against it. So when we talk about finding your ethnic tribe, when you look at you know, leaders of the past, they made connections across color barriers. That's the most dangerous thing is when people stop looking at the construct of race, right? And then they start connecting with each other based on vision and values and mission. Right. Now you got a society that's fighting against agendas together, yeah. right? It's the most dangerous thing is they're not going at the adults. The idea is these new things that they're throwing at children, right? So most people can agree, like children have no consciousness between the ages of one to seven, right? Then you start to develop the ability to differentiate, right? between like, I believe it's uh, seven to 14, right then between, then from 14 to like 25, we go through puberty, right? Then we have the ability to reject information, right? But that child that's being indoctrinated through these traditions and these ideas, they don't have an ability to reject it. Mm -hmm. So when you put things into the schools and you put it into the media, you're programming that child on what the future is going to be. So we're seeing a war for the future. What are the values of this country now? Nobody can say. The reason that this country is losing the global wars that's going on is because there's a lot of in-house fighting. We don't even know if this is an American agenda versus a Russia or a Chinese one because it benefits them to have the American people fighting against each other. So you have to understand that, you know, even AI could be doing it. AI, we found out that the Russian bots was creating a lot of racial conflicts that didn't exist. So now you don't know if you're even talking to somebody, right? It could be a bot that's getting you angry right now because they understand the programming of who you are, which is why I teach these things. Because if you're not aware of them, you go along with the program, right? And so now we have to make sure that, think about who are you? What do you believe? What are your ideas? Stand firm on them. We get, everybody allows us to say, well, you believe this, but I'll go along with this. When you compromise yourself, you lose yourself, right? You don't know what you stand for anymore. You can't talk about certain things. That's why they always say, you can tell who got the most power by who you got to whisper about. You know what I'm saying? We never, you never got to whisper about black people. They say it loud and proud about what's wrong with us, what our issues is, what they don't like. We say it about each other. So we have to get to this collective place of, like I said, identifying what our actual core values are and then build culture based on our core values and our integrity and don't let it shake. The thing about Islam is that Islam won't accept you to play with it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just paint Prophet Muhammad as somebody else. That's like death. But see, in this new world, people can play with your religion. They can play with your ideas and feelings and you accept it. That's selling your soul. Because no, I want to stay in this social circle. I want to continue to get money. I want to stay in this network. I don't want to be canceled. So they're playing on the fears of the American people. Whether you agree with something or disagree, it don't matter. They're destroying the alignment of self so you can't be whole anymore, right? And once they know your desires and they impress you, now that they control you by those things. So America, to be great for once, number one, if you look at the statistics of black men in this country, we have the worst out of any group, but we've been skipped over. We've been skipped over. How do you raise a nation up? How do you talk about progress if black men have the highest rate of diabetes, 
highest rate of cancer, highest rate of violence, highest rate of prison population, second highest in suicide because they don't count slow suicide. What we do to destruct the things that kill ourselves slowly to numb the pain of the trauma that we go through. We have all of the highest rates, yet we making progress. What about that black man? So we are walking around constantly numbing ourselves, right? Trying to disassociate, have out of body experience, so we be scrolling, we be distracting ourselves. We don't want to deal with reality. But no, no, don't worry about it. Black woman making progress. Just look at this statistic. But if we a family, we would never separate that. We'll say if she not doing good, I'm not good doing good. We not doing good. Yeah. I want, to get a, I want to get a little spiritual with you. I've seen your interviews with Billy Carson, absolutely amazing interviews. If anybody didn't see it, I advise you to Google Billy Carson, 19 Keys. Let's get spiritual with the topic of reparations. This is such a hot topic that's talked about right now. Um, if we analyze it from a spiritual lens and we analyze topics such as, let's say, reincarnation, we understand that whom we call God wants to experience so God may come down here in many shapes, forms, sizes, or whatever to experience infinite amount of versions of itself uh -huh. to understand itself because it's everything. So in order to understand itself, it has to subtract from itself to, in order to understand itself. If me and you, in a former life, was a white guy, I was a white man, you was a white woman, or I was a white woman, you was a white man, how does that impact? And we're analyzing, we're spiritual beings, we're not thinking from a Western perspective, how does that impact the topic of reparations and us saying we want our reparations, we want to get paid for what happened before when maybe what happened before was caused by us in the first place? Mm. We still need that check. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, you know, America, the best thing it can do for America is to repair its wrongs. The foundation of America is based on murder and violence and war. Right? If America wants to be a superpower and have a future, that's the best thing for America to do. If you take, like, you know, we can look at ancient Kemet and all these different places, but when we look at black America and we think about who has been the greatest solvers of problems, who have been the greatest fighters of social injustice and freedom and equality, there is by far none that even comes close to our contributions to the planet Earth. And when we look at reparations, it's not just African descendants of slaves. Because when they look at the California reparations, they're looking at what happened after slavery. Right? They're looking at all of the trauma that we went through that's on the FBI files. Right? They're looking at the way there was redlining in the hoods and the crack, right? And everything that was set up and saying that we got to repair those people for the things that was done to them in this country. Right? So therefore, it's not even just going to be us taking our genealogy test to see if we're connected to slavery. This is what happened in the last 100 years. Right, right, right. So America, no way, which way they can get away from cutting us that check. Right? So it's, it's, it's our responsibility, though, to understand that money cannot repair us. You give a broken man money, he's still broken with a little more money. But if you teach him who he is... You give him a foundation and a spiritual compass to navigate throughout this world. You teach him how to heal himself, right? We're able to create environments of nature because city thinking is destroying us. Y'all in New York, I don't know how you do it. You got to hear high vibrational frequencies. You got to go step into the park. You got to go to a beach. You got to uh, ground yourself and let go of all of the things that we possessed in the world and release them back to earth. Then move forward. So we're not even in the space to really navigate ourselves. You go to the hood and you just throw money, that's just throwing PP loans around. What's going to happen? It's going to come back to those. Because money is an energy. It's a currency. It's right. The worst thing you can do is get something before you're ready for it. So we have to go through a spiritual revolution first. Right? And then once we go through the spiritual revolution, then we can get the currency because then people will be spending their mind based on their spirit. Right? But right now, if we are in the spirit of capitalism, we are in the spirit of consumerism, if we are controlled by our desires instead of understanding our needs, then we will not invest money, we will spend money. This is why financial literacy is one of the greatest tools for teaching us on how to win this war. When we go around, we don't have nobody that can teach us about, you know, bro, teach me how to budget, teach me how to invest. Ain't nobody around that can teach us that. So we have these financial deserts. Right. We need access to somebody who can give us the knowledge. Right. And so once we do that, 
Now we are in the place to know what to do. And we take that spirit and then we execute. And if America ever want to be grateful once, it can cut that check. That's the highest level thing they can do. Thanks. Keys, I definitely appreciate this interview, my brother. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you to everybody at the Apollo. We appreciate you. Can we get them lights on again? Surely you do. Cut the stars on. As we leave, I want you to take an oath to yourself. I want you to understand that your current level is your lowest level. I want you to take an oath to commit to the production of bringing value to the world. I want you to take an oath to not being impressed by the things that happen on a daily basis. I want you to take an oath to destroy the nigger inside of you, the lazy inside of you, the procrastinator inside of you. I want you to take an oath to be at that highest spiritual level of consciousness that you can obtain, to be in tune with the infinite in the universe. I want you to take an oath to stand up, stomach in, chest out, to not have your head down, to not be slacking. I want you to take an oath to create a bigger vision than the one that you've been sold. I want you to take an oath to break the chains from the mental, spiritual, and physical bondage that they have on us. I want you to take an oath to see your brother hurt you, help your brother. I want you to take an oath to know who you are. We are living in the greatest time to be alive. But a lot of us ain't living. You can't experience the joy of being a human being until you give birth to something. Then you got to protect something. We ain't got nothing in the culture to protect. We can't protect wealth. We can't protect our relationships because they not good. They toxic in the first place. So we're looking to destroy everything about our culture because innately we know it's wrong. We don't know how to build with family. We don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to create relationships. My brother came and talked about wealth. They talked about having land. Because no matter what happens with the currency, no matter what are the issues, we gonna all need to walk on the ground. So when we know who we are and we have ownership over this planet Earth, we can start feeling our rulership. We can start tapping into who we are. We can say, listen, I deserve it. I want us to be able to think about this moment that we're in right now because this is setting the precedence. We don't have to just rap. We don't have to just do entertainment. I know the playoffs is out there, but who gives a fuck? I'm just being honest. We have so much sport in play, but we have so many problems and no solutions. We need engineers. We need architects. We need builders today. We need executors. So how many of y'all are going to take that oath to be the executors of now? You came here because you recognize something is wrong in the world. You recognize something is wrong with the food that we eat. Something is wrong with the way we speak to each other. Something is wrong with the fact that we don't support each other. We walk past each other and don't want to be seen. When we do the divine work, when we start operating at our highest level, the devil can't do nothing to us. I ain't talking about external, I'm talking inside. So take this time that we living in and build. Stop squandering the opportunity of today talking about tomorrow, talking about yesterday. Are we at our highest level or our lowest level? I don't know if I believe y'all, I gotta go. Are we at our highest level or our lowest level? We at our highest level of our lowest level. Highest level. Well, let's see it in our actions on a daily basis. Build with your family, go to war, and take over the planet Earth. Make some noise for 19 Keys. Make some noise for Yaki Awakened. Make some noise for Bashir Music and Samad. Jack Heller Classic. And make some noise for Black Magic, Rich in the Building. Make some noise for Acre Boys with two acres of land for 19 Keys. Let's bring them out one time. Come on. Love y'all. Appreciate you. Oh, I just got some land, y'all. I'm lit for surely. Thank push your hands you, together for 19 Keys and push your hands together for May 4th at the Apollo, the highest level tour, the birthday edition for 19 Keys. Make sure you get your gold water and your crowns as you leave today. Uh -huh, uh 
Um, I love y'all, man. Continue to watch high level conversations, continue to build. Let's continue to invest in each other and pour into each other. I do a lot of teaching, a lot, I ain't gonna lie, I give away all my greatest secrets on high level conversations. So I come out here to just pour inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Because when we at home, those are our bases of operation. Y'all be blessed. How will you build your wealth? How will you control your time? How will you develop your skill sets? Skill sets are your assets because it is something that you can utilize and leverage, especially once you get the knowledge to learn how to be able to control your reality, to be able to go wherever you want to, to be able to build whatever you want to, to be able to eat whatever you want to. It changes from when you are on survival mode at the lowest level, so now you have skill sets that you can pay for your assets and you can start to build wealth, and that's when you're at the highest level. Marcus Garvey was somebody who was a revolutionary. He had the spirit of an inventor. He had the spirit of an innovator. He had the spirit of an entrepreneur. He was one of the first to be able to give people certificates of stock shares in his company. And now we are in Ghana. And that star of the flag, it represents his innovation, that black star line, because he's seen something another culture had, and he wanted it too. And we see wealth being spread all across. And we know knowing that the number one ways to build wealth is through the stock market. It is through investing. And one of those ways to invest in is options trading. That means that you can make money either daily, you can make money monthly, you can make money weekly, you can make money yearly, depending on the strategy that you have. Now, I know most people is out there trying to figure out, well, how do I do that? How do we see individuals like Aristotle where he gives his trades daily and he has thousands of people and they're making money? Is it real? What well, the question is, it has to be if it's transparent because nothing is being hidden. Now, what we want to do is we got something that we want to take 200 people with us, 200 people to the highest level by allowing you to be able to join into the Honey Drip Network for just $25. Now, the reason we wanted to do $25 is because we wanted to make sure that it was the lowest possible excuse barrier on the planet Earth. That if you can get the AI, if you can get the courses, if you can get the ebook, if you can get the teachers, if you can get the Discord, and every single thing that you needed, what's in front of you left? Just excuses. So, me and my brother Aristotle is eliminating excuses for the next 200 people. Jump in, join in, learn how to trade, start making money today, and see if this is a skill set for you. Peace.